you look 10 years younger, bro. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. I shaved a little bit for the event, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. It's good. The, the event was last Saturday, right? Yes. Part of the it was awesome, man. We had a really good turnout. Uh, Larry Wheels made it. Uh, that was really good. And uh, a ton of people from the gyms came out, friends, vendors, supporters. It was a pretty cool gathering. Not too bad. Very, very nice. I really actually like it. That's dope. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he made like, a, um, like an energy drink or something, I saw. Yeah, sure. it's called the White Rabbit. I think it's a Kratom drink. You know what Kratom is? Yeah. Well... Yeah. I, I kind of know what it, I don't know how it feels or what it does, but I, I, I've heard of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the best way to put it is uh, it feels like CBD. If you ever just did, had something with CBD in it, it relaxes you, takes off that edge, and it's supposed to be anti-inflammatory. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. Have you tried it? Yes, I have. It's actually pretty good. Uh, not too bad. It has a little earthy taste, but if you can get over that, then you'll like it. You could you could drink it and stuff. Wow, I, I didn't. I, I yeah. didn't. I thought that. Okay. So okay. Te technically speaking, uh, kratom is a South Asia plant okay. that is used to be uh, still uh, to this day is used as an alternative to yeah. opioids for people who have surgeries and use a ton of opioids and painkillers. Mm -hmm. This is basically something that is natural. Uh, supplement that they can switch to that helps with the pain and daily aches and uh, levels of inflammation. Mm -hmm. uh, not as good as opioids, but it's a good alternative so mm -hmm. they can uh, get a little healthier and get off of that stuff, but yeah. still have something to resort to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Op opioids is hard to hard to beat, man. Hard to uh, hard to match that kind of potency. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely! Thank God I never went that route. Yeah, and uh, but dude, it's, uh, it's actually way dangerous than actual steroids. Oh yeah, you know? I bet. yeah, I bet. like I bet. these things will actually trash your kidneys and liver. You know, fuck up yeah. your whole life. Fuck up your whole life. That's true. How you doing, Mrs. Stu? Can you hear us? Can you guys hear me okay? No. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do you hear? I can hear. Yeah. Like yes. Clearly, hi Stu, how you doing? Hey Zay, how you doing? Great. Oh, brother. okay. Good to meet you. You got the mic set up, Stu? Yeah, I, <laughs> I got this old thing. My uh, my dad gave it to me because I don't. He doesn't have any use for it anymore. But like, I got I got a fancy mic like you, dude. Was like, see, <laughs> come on, man. I, I got the fancy mic going, bro. You 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 do look bigger with the haircut, actually. I know. Yeah, but I, I gotta be honest, man. I miss it. I, okay. <laughs> So the good thing about the hair, man, it makes you stand out. So people don't exactly, forget. yeah. But like, so like, let's say you know, my girl doesn't follow bodybuilding that closely, but like, let's say I thought, oh, Stu's gonna be on, and she remembers you because she remembers the the hair and everything. And things. So I'm like, yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, it's easy. It makes you memorable. So I think it's important to have like a trademark that 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 sets you apart. You know. Yeah, it's coming back, dude. It should be grown back by the time I'm competing again next year. So. How how long did that first one take you to to grow? Uh, it was from the USA's when you were there last year. To I got a, I got a haircut like a week out from the USA's, and then all the way to New York. So like it was sweet. like nine months. <laughs> That's pretty quick, man. Wow. That's yeah, pretty quick, man. from yeah, from yeah. like this, you know, real short. So yeah, I feel like the GH makes your your hair grow faster. <laughs> Better do more than. <laughs> <laughs> How's There's the, a uh, cutoff for that though. After ten, I use it. It's, yeah, yeah, it don't, don't get no more. Than that. <laughs> well, I guess I, I got it maxed out then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, to be honest, bro, I feel like any more than ten I use, I don't notice any benefits. My hands get number, and I hold the shit ton of water. You know, I've never, I've never done more than that. Honestly, yeah. you know, my coach wants me to run more. He wants me to like switch over to pharma, and you know. It's just so expensive, you know. So yeah, I don't, I don't really want to do that. I see the point, you know. It's it's worked so far. So. Yeah, for for me, uh, I remember Boston was saying that if, if you can push the GH, you, you'll continue to grow. Uh, and I agree. Just the doses, I don't agree. I don't agree that if you take more and more, you'll continue to grow more and more. 
I believe just leaving GH in there at whatever dose, it it lifts the cap off. So yeah. when I was only on gear, let's say I was adding, let's say three, four pounds of muscle a year. Now you add the GH, now it goes up to maybe five to seven pounds of muscle a year. So yeah. the rate is faster and I feel less of a ceiling. Yeah, because yeah, like what's happening there, it's, it's like a time and dosage thing, right? So mm-hmm. like when you're taking growth hormone, it's producing new muscle cells, but they're really small to start. And then you exactly. have to train them, you have to feed them, and then they grow potentially as big as the ones that you had in the first place, right? Exactly. But that takes a while. So, you know, you have to take it a large enough dose for an extended period of time, and then those little cells become big cells. And that's when, you know, lifting the limiter is is accurate there. That's that's kind of what you're doing. 100%, 100%. I think to a point, the higher the, higher the dose you can maybe exped- expedite the process that I, I guess is, I don't know if it's fully saturated or what, what the case is, but I think like if you take two IUs, it might take you a couple of weeks to notice the fullness. Where uh-huh. six IUs, you might notice the fullness faster, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get to 10 pounds more stage weight any faster. You know, yeah. I still feel like there's going to be some time needed and you, you want like a moderately uh, high dose, but too much just like with gear you take 500 tests you get good results 750 you get more results maybe a gram you get more results or you go two grams you don't necessarily get double the results that you would from a gram you yeah. know and then you just can't live with yourself at that point you know you got you're carrying 12 tw- tw- 15 20 pounds of water you feel like shit you know exactly i mean i i i can't justify the expense of running it that much higher you know yeah um and some people do, you know, but I think, I mean, I have only run into blood sugar issues, like, like high blood sugars on growth hormone when my food's like crazy high and I've been on it for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. But when I, um, if I'm, you know, smart with it, you know, it's not really an issue. I think if you start running like 12, 15 higher, you're going to have more issues there. Um, sure, so sure. as far as like the blood sugar and that's like, that's, that's really the, the dangerous part of running growth hormone, right? Um, health wise, I'd much prefer to use more GH and less gear, uh, as far as like the effect that it's going to have on your blood work. Like if I'm dealing with a client and they can afford it, like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do that, you know? Um, but you know, when their blood sugars start getting crazy high that you gotta, you gotta pull back there. Yeah. I'm I'm one yeah. of those people that um I have to I'm not a believer like I have to you have to make me believe or I have to figure out myself so yeah you, you could, gotta do it right you gotta learn exactly yeah. so you could tell me well y- you're not gonna get any more results on more than a gram I'm be like well uh, maybe for you I I can't say that for sure I've never tried it so I've literally tried every dose of everything of every supplement you can take I, I've tried everything I had to just yeah. see for myself. And you usually come back to the conclusion that everybody already told you, honestly. Yeah. It's like, so, yeah, it's like this, this amount works. Everyone takes like a, about a gram of test plus or minus, and then some other shit on top. It's like, it's not complicated. Everyone does it that way for a reason. Exactly. So, so they, they came, I'm a Compton said any more than a gram of test, you're just going to feel shittier. And I'm like, yeah. let me try it. And then you try it. I'm, like, I'm going to try even more. And then you just realize you just held a bunch of water rate that you had to lose anyways to step on stage. Yeah. And you just felt shittier losing. <laughs> it was just a shittier experience, really. I will yeah. say, um, as I've gotten bigger, like over the years, yeah. if I ran a thousand megs of test like three or four years ago, I would have felt awful. Like I would have gotten gyno, puffy nipples, just like a bunch of water, a yeah. bunch of bullshit, right? And like now, like a gram feels totally fine. I barely... You know, I, I use an AI on that dose just because I usually need it. But, yeah, yeah. you know, I feel comfortable. Uh, and I think I just have a lot more muscle to kind of soak up that drug, you know, that can actually yeah. utilize it. That's my bro science explanation. But, you know, yeah. there's more muscle tissue. There's probably more receptors on that tissue. It's it's going to bind to those receptors instead of floating around and causing issues in your bloodstream, right? So yeah. um, I think it kind of makes sense, you know. And then uh, for me, I I, I kind of have like a water retention issue to begin with. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so if I push the gear, I just you just feel and look so horrible. Yeah, it doesn't even make sense. You know, uh, even if there was more benefit, 
uh, you know, as far as uh, muscle growth, I'm not willing to take it because I would, whatever I gained from that, I would lose it on the back end because my training would go to shit. My back would be, I would get back pumps. I can't roll or anything. Yeah. So it wouldn't be worth it. And then uh, to piggyback off what you said about the GH, yeah, like the first time I took like two IUs, it was unbearable. My hands, I couldn't sleep. My hands are tingling and shit. And then now I probably wouldn't feel, I probably wouldn't even feel two IUs. Oh, yeah. You know I'm saying? Bro, I've been on 10 units for like the better part of like two to three years now. So yeah. it's like with if, if that's not in there, it's like, I, I don't know what it's like to not have that in there, you know? Exactly. So it's just uh, it's the just sweet the spot I found was seven. I use seven. seven I, with GHI. Yeah, seven worked for yeah seven or eight like within there. And honestly, guys, whenever I switched to Serostim, mm -hmm. that fucking uh, helped me a ton. For some really? reason, I reacted really well once I, I made that switch and started paying more money for Serostim. Yeah. Dude, it was it was really one of the big things that uh, like helped me get that round look. Plus, it helped me stay so full in the entire prep. So I never really lost any fullness. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can definitely say it was the GH. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you said, more more than not eight, I, I don't feel there's any benefit. You know? Yeah, and boy, that's Sarah Stibbs. That's got to hurt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bro, so yeah. Was, nowadays, bro, I was hearing people say 700, 800. I'm like, what the hell? For, for what? A, a lifetime yeah. supplier? What, what, what are we talking about here? Oh, just one kit. I'm like, damn. Okay. I think it was 126 kits, like usually like 500 bucks or something. It, it was, it, okay. it was, but it's been go, it's been going up, bro. It's been going up. It's this I'm economy, bro. Everything's more expensive. <laughs> yeah, come on, bro. Not yeah, too many know. AIDS patients out there, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, man. I think bodybuilders like we're gonna run all these things obsolete. There's an insulin sh shortage. There's a growth hormone shortage. You know where it's going, bro. We know. <laughs> we can we hope. Yeah. We can hope. You we know, know. <laughs> dude, I, it's crazy. Like, I, I hear some of my friends talk about, like, you know, where they get their insulin from uh -huh. and stuff. Um, even, like, diabetics, you know, prescribed insulin by their doctors, right? Yeah. And it's like, you know, they're spay spending three, five hundred bucks a month on, on insulin. Yeah. And you can get, you know, Turkish pharmaceutical stuff for, like, 30 or 40 bucks for, like, five pens. You're you right, know? actually. You're it's crazy right. cheap. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm wondering, like, how the fuck are the, is it so cheap over there? And then they're just like gouging the hell out of everyone in the states. It's so fucked up, man. It is fucked up. To, to be honest, I usually get it. I usually get it from diabetics, but I think I'm gonna have to be with the prices now. I'm gonna have to switch over to to overseas. Yeah. I it's just don't like it coming overseas. You know, I'm like, ah, it. You know, it comes without any ice packs or anything. I'm like, it just, it's just been in the air for yeah. days. It's just just sitting there like that, oh, hot. You know. <laughs> I've got pens that I've had in my fridge for like probably a couple years now, uh, yeah. and it still seems to work. You know, yeah, like yeah. Fuma log pens. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just too cheap to buy more. I don't see the point. You know, so, man. There's been use. times. There's been times I've left it out, like you know, for a couple of days, and it still worked. Yeah. There's been there's been times where one time I put it in the freezer, bro. By accident, I thought I was I was tired, and I just threw it in the freezer, and I woke up and it was frozen. I was, and I googled it; they're like it's gonna be ruined. And I tried it, and I felt it. I was like, oh, I feel a little, I feel a little low blood sugar going on. I'm like, I think it's working, you know. So it looks like that that shit is invincible from from what I've. Uh... Honestly, I just keep a Hemolog bag in my gym bag because I forget to do it sometimes. Yeah, you know, yeah. if I'm leaving or like before when I left work, like I had to have it with me all day. So yeah, I just yeah. keep it in my gym bag. So exactly. I don't know. I think some of that stuff's overblown. But, What's uh, up, Joe? What's up, Big hey, Joe? Guys. How you doing, brother? Hey, Rice. Oh, mm. there you go. There you go. I got a <laughs> meal. I got a meal here too, but the the, the host can't eat because it, it looks they're gonna talk shit about me. You guys can. <laughs> <laughs> unless unless Beef Stew, he got the mic. Beef Stew, you want to take over? Uh, right, food, you don't back. want me running this shit, dude. It'll go sideways <laughs> really fast. It already went sideways as soon as I got in here. <laughs> wow. We big start deal. talking about drugs. Like, oh yeah, well, once we, <laughs> comes in, we, we started talking about drugs. Right oh away. no, it's good, Joe. Yeah, and baby, well, you're the I first thought... guy who gets excited about a low blood sugar reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, man, come on. <laughs> Dang, so, you know, so Paul, Paul's roommate threw a Halloween party yesterday. 
Oh, okay, okay. You, you guys so turned up. I was up to like 5 a.m. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm over here trying. This is me on one. <laughs> oh, you're behind, man. Okay, so. Yeah, so, but hey, uh, you know what? I lost like four pounds from yesterday to today. So really? I'm over here like, like my meals, I, I can get six in every hour. Yeah. Like, I, I, it's that easy to put them down right now. I'm, my appetite's that high, so I don't worry about it. Lucky. But, when you yeah. when you when you stay up that late, right? You stay up to five in the morning. Do you continue to eat, or do you just or you stop eating when you when you reach your meals? Also, what I did yesterday was I got all my meals in, and because I knew I was going to be distracted, uh -huh. so I got I got I have to eat seven uh -huh. meals. Um, I ate five meals, and then I replaced two of them. With a cheat meal, so like I ended up at like a Wendy's last night. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and so like it, it, like I was distracted, but once the shit was said and done, I went to a Wendy's, and then I went home. So I left the party earlier than that, but I um I ate before going home. Yeah, okay. I was saying. Let me let me pull this up real quick. I saw I saw, <laughs> I saw Joe in the in the in the cowboy joint. Let me see. <laughs> I saw that too. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> He's doing it, brother. He's doing it. Doing the it look, damn thing. I still got it. It, it looked good on y'all, though. I'm not gonna lie. The the cowboy get up. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see. Okay. Okay. Look at look, look at Big Joe with the cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody probably like, what the hell is going on? The assless chaps. <laughs> hey, why didn't you wear those? <laughs> yeah, he gotta do the thought. Everybody, yeah, like, like, yeah, you people. Yo, I don't know. <laughs> That's, okay, okay, Joe got it. <laughs> Big Joe still got it. Get it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that that's funny. Yeah, but uh, before you got on, we was talking about GH for some reason. But we were talking about like I feel like anything past uh ten I use, I don't I don't really feel any more benefits. You know, I don't feel like I grow any faster. I just get super numb in the joints and hands and all that the good most, shit. The most, I ever, the most I've ever ran was post-USAs. I went For USAs, I was doing six IUs, and then um, post-USAs, uh, during the rebound, I was doing eight. That's the most I've ever used. Oh, come on, Joe. There's, there's no way. There's, there's no way you do less than 20 IUs, Joe. Come on, bro. <laughs> you can't, you can't win, Mr. I did eight. I did eight, and I don't yeah. look like Joe, so... I, <laughs> I, I think I've only ran nine cycles so far in my lifetime. Yeah, because but 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 you you, you, started, you started at like well, like a few years ago, right Maybe. before I turned twenty seven. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's kind of crazy to to think about, bro. I've been doing gear since I was like twelve, bro. I've been on. <laughs> well, when I when I won the California <laughs> when I, when, I, when I won the California that prep cycle was my fourth one. Damn. That's so, I, yeah, I, I had three under wow. my belt before that show. And then um, then I got three more by the time I did USA's, I think. It, is, it, is it a coincidence that the guys who start late seem to progress further? Or is it just that the guys who wait is because their genetics are so good as far as building muscle that they just didn't feel like they needed it until later on? Well, I mean, when I was when I was uh, natty, I I was able to squat like you know four plates for reps. I was able to deadlift six plates. Mm -hmm. I was two hundred fifteen pounds doing that. Yeah, um, I think uh, my strength because when you're natty, you have to train for strength. Uh, strength yeah, and food I is agree. all you have. I agree. And uh, that I mean, when you're enhanced, you can do the high volume and the the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy style. You know, it works. Like something like that. That's more beneficial mm -hmm. when you're enhanced because you can recover. I agree. I agree with that. But yeah, you you only have those fast twitch fibers really mm -hmm. um, to play in your advantage for the most size you're going to get as a natural. So you have to build your strength. So I think because I gave my my myself a higher strength ceiling once I got on gear, all those numbers still rose. Yeah. And so I had a I had a way bigger platform, and now that I have a certain strength base, if you volumize that strength. You know, you, you turn those like heavy sets into volume now. Like yeah. your 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 spectrum is just even bigger. 
And yeah, I, I think I another. Agree. Uh, go ahead, Stu. The, I have a couple of clients who just started their first cycles uh, mm-hmm. recently. Um, and, you know, they're young guys, but they know how to fucking train hard. You know, they're, they already yeah. know how to, they've gotten strong. One of them is a foreign power lifter. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's just fucking crazy strong, you know. And the guys put on like 55 pounds of tissue in like four, four and a half months. It's insane. Like, I mean, he rebounded out of a show, so he's getting that too. But like, the guy knew how to diet, he knew how to train hard. He had all the X's and O's, like the important shit down. And then you put a little spice on there, and it's like you're off yeah. the races. You know, yeah. I think you know the 17, 18 year olds hopping on drugs now are just like, you know, they they don't have any of that down, you know, yeah. at all. Um, and it's cr- it's funny because you know. I've been I've been thinking about this. It's been driving me crazy recently. You know, like if you go in the comment section of like some video a kid puts up and he says he's like 19 years old and he's natural and he looks decent, you know, mm-hmm. literally 90% of the comments are just like, you're on drugs, you're on drugs. Why are you mm-hmm. lying? And yeah. this guy looks like he looks natural, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like the the everyone thinks that everybody's on gear now, because like a lot of people are. But like a lot of people are on drugs and just look like shit. So they, you know, they see their buddy who started shit and he doesn't look like anything. And then they start stuff and they don't look like anything. And then they see a guy who actually has the important stuff down. He looks pretty decent. And he's just like, oh, you must be on drugs. It's like the bar is just super low now. Yeah. For what people will believe is natural, which is yeah. just pathetic. You know, it, it just, it, it pisses me off, honestly. It, it is. They take away the work ethic behind it. Yeah, like, exactly. you, you know, you work your ass off. Like you said, like the fundamentals are learned. Like when you say natty, and I, like I said, all you have is training and food. Mm-hmm. That means you know how to eat because you want to be able to train hard, and you train hard because that's the only way to put on muscle. Like there's no androgens to help you, yeah. no nothing. So the fundamentals no are learned, and so the guys that start gear without those fundamentals always look like shit because they never put in the the grit, like the hard shit. You know the. Exactly. The love for the training because that's all you have. Yeah, yeah. Not I, really else to help. I also remember seeing the interview with Dexter, and he was like, "Yo, always do your first show natural." And at the time, I was maybe in my mid early twenties, and I didn't agree. I was like, "Why? Why? What's the point if you know you're gonna hop on anyways? Why would you do your first show natural just to not win? Like, don't we want to win?" But now I get it because. I have a my trainer partner who's also my client. He's natural, right? And he would always he had you know really good shape, really good condition, everything, while eating junk food all day long, right? And working out at like the apartment gym. Then I'm like, bro, come train with me. He's working out with me now. He follow my diet, and the way I see his body changing, literally just from changing his diet, it made me wonder. It's like, how much are we missing out because? I wouldn't have thought, you know, in my early 20s that I can make those kind of changes just from food. Uh, I would never believe that. <laughs> but seeing that happen live in action, I'm like, that makes sense. So now I'm like, you know what? We Let's compete next year naturally. I think, I, I think. I mean, you're going to be like a lightweight, but you're 100% going to win because nobody's going to look like that. The muscle bellies, the the balance, like nobody could. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you if you won the overall. If the if the heavyweight isn't in shape, you could beat the damn heavyweight. You know, for for I like it. So obviously, I mean, he, he's a little bit shorter, so proportions are a little different. I do think if you're shorter, you can you know maybe add more muscle, look bigger at a, at a lighter weight, of course. But mm-hmm. that being said, the changes he's making, I'm like, what if I would have done that? What if I would have said, you know what, let me do my first show natural? And yeah, even if I got second call out to actually learn how to diet and peak my body because my only issue this far has been peaking. You know, I have muscle, you know, so it's like if peaking is my only issue, imagine if I would have mastered peaking before I even hopped on here. Yeah. You know, no, that's, that's, what, that's I think, what Joe did. I, I think the other reason to compete naturally the first for your first show is like, you need to figure out if you even like this, you know, 100%. if you want to compete, like you should, Get on stage, go through that diet process, see if you even enjoy it before you make the massive commitment of t- hopping on drugs, probably for the rest of your life, because you're probably going to be on TRT mm-hmm. realistically, you know, if you do well, this uh, seriously. So yes, you know, yeah. if you're if you're 19 or 20, though, like you're not thinking that far in the future. No. I, I wasn't. I mean, I kind of was because I did my first show like 
I took some Klein before, you know. That Ooh, was it. Careful. <laughs> it was like mostly <laughs> natty. But <laughs> I mean, count. you know, I wasn't on like hormones yet. So like yeah. I waited till after that to do, you know, make that jump. But like as soon as I got off stage, I was like, I want to do this like <laughs> yeah. for real. Like, and then it was just kind of snowballed, you know. But you know, I, I at least had that first experience. Like I knew I wanted to do it seriously, for, like and it was like both feet in, you know, not just like this wishy washy shit. Uh so you can yeah. you can misconstrue your love misconstrue <laughs> you big no word <laughs> big yeah, word bro I, 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 I gotta get i gotta get warm before i, before I say words like that warm up <laughs> but <laughs> yeah so you, you're training your love for training isn't necessarily love for competing you see like uh i actually like the trend uh, i like the trend twins but you see oh. them trying to prep for a show and they're working with Greg Doucet, right? And he's giving him so much leeway. He's like, you can cheat once once a day, basically. He's like, you can have protein pancakes, all this stuff. Boy, they couldn't even make it through a couple of months of dieting because they love training and they love social media. But do they love dieting and training when you're not strong, when you don't look good, when you can't play around and joke with the camera because you're in a bad mood? They, they weren't ready for that, right? Because... That's the part people don't get. They think it's all fun and games. You just train and you're going to be benching 500 pounds. No, you're going to be weak. You're going to feel like shit. They weren't ready for that shit. So, but they're already on big cycles. I'm, I don't know how big cycles are. They're already on cycles. They're already not natty. And they just figured out they might not like competing. If you can't get ready for a local show and diet for a couple months, how the hell? And they already told me, oh, we want to get pro cards. How are you going to get pro cards if you can't diet for a local show? You can't even make it to the show. So yeah, did they end they, up competing or no? No, they 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 started binging, you know. Oh, it's, and it's like, there you go. Like, do you really know if you like it if you never tried it? It's easy to watch, you know, Bumstead work out and be like, I want to do that, but you got to you got to see if you actually can do it and if you enjoy it. Because if you're miserable, you know, there's no point. There's no point in being miserable for the next ten years, you know. Yeah, so, people well, people like force it. Like they, 100%. like young guys are like, I'm going to turn pro. Oh, I love, I love the future IFBB pro thing. You know, yeah. for a guy who's never gotten on stage, oh, like man. go fuck yourself, kiddo. Like just oh, shut oh, up. Yeah. <laughs> one guy, one guy has, he said, uh, future super heavyweight. I'm like, what, is, what does that mean? What, 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 does that, what does that even mean? Like, what, what, I don't know if that's worse or better. It's trying to grow. Bro. Like, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> one, one guy at Gold's had a belt on one of the um, what do you call it the what's the brand what's that brand of belt uh, Cardillo aesthetic Cardillo yeah <laughs> he had a Cardillo belt but I, I should you not it said you know how the IBB Pro it said MPC competitor on the belt on a Cardillo belt I said <laughs> you you just have to pay a fee that that's not an achievement you just pay and he had to buy the fee. belt. Yeah, that's a lot of money for those things. That's an expensive belt. You pay, you drop five hundred dollars to say NPC competitor. What the? What does that mean, bro? Come More on, money than cents. But you know how to step on stage, dog. I think. I think dude, that's, isn't that the difference between the a bodybuilder and an influencer? Exactly. You know? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. I, well, it's also he's like maybe he's a bodybuilder, but like he just he just wants to feel like he's part of something. You know, he's like boom, that's it. I think a lot of a lot of kids, you know, I'm ranting on TikTok kids right now, but like they're you know young people, nineteen to twenty two age range, like nobody knew what the fuck they wanted at that age, right? They don't yeah. have an identity yet. They're young. They're stupid. That's fine, right? Mm -hmm. But. You know, so they they gravitate towards like fitness or like I want to be an influencer or competitor maybe, and they just they don't know yet. Um, and I guess you got to try it to find out. But like when trying it to find out implies you're going to be taking like life altering hormones. That's a that's kind of dangerous game to be playing, and that's what you see a lot. You know, a lot of young guys on drugs. I can I feel like I can usually see right through it, right? Uh, like it, even even with the coaches you hire, you know, it's like yeah, I don't want to call out any any teams, but like you know, I'm with Team uh, Rolling Stone. I'm like Team, team oh, yeah, they want surely, to feel part of something, yeah. yeah surely exactly. you know Team Rolling Stone. I'm like, no, I don't know. <laughs> I I don't follow Team Rolling Stone. Yeah, but you know that they, they coach all the the new guys, the the shizzies and the drizzies, and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't know I, I don't know who they are. Like you know. So it's like when you when you go for those kind of coaches like the the, the Trent twins 
Why didn't they go? Uh, Hani Rambot is young LA. They could have hired Hani, but they went and hired Greg. No offense to Greg, but Greg isn't necessarily coaching, you know, a lot of uh, aspiring pros. He's coaching more lifestyle and influencers, really, right? So that, that kind of, you know, they, they could have found, you know, like a really hardcore bodybuilding coach, even even in locally, but they chose chose Greg. So it shows you they don't really, if you're really into something, you're going to do your research. You're going to figure out who's who, who's the real coaches, what's the history, you know, oh, Kevin Lavroni, and you know the history, you know all of this because you really love it. If you love your craft, you learn everything about it. You know, nobody had to tell Zade that Brad Rowe is a good coach. Nobody had to tell you that Blue is a good coach. Nobody had to tell uh, Joe that Justin's a good coach. You already knew that because you actually follow the sport. You yeah, know, you've now, seen the resume. And, and, you yeah. know, the the end result of this is all just like, you know, kids kind of fucking up their lives. You know, if, if they were just getting into the gym and like working out and stuff, you know, taking pictures of yourself every set is like cringy regardless. The culture is weird. But like... Yeah. They're not doing damage to themselves. Like yeah, when the when the drugs come into play and it's just so casually thrown around, it's like, man, this is just sad because a few years from now, you know, most of these kids won't even be working out. They'll have fucked up bodies as a result. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, like I, all these new TikTok influencers and stuff, the, the young folks, they're they're cool and popular because they're young. You know, what are the trend twins doing five years from now when they're not 20, 21 years old? I don't know how old they are, but they're really young, right? That's yeah. we're like, you know, Sam Sulek, he's fucking blown up. It's crazy, right? I like his videos. But yeah. like when he's 30, you know, what does the career look like there? You know, yeah, yeah. because he doesn't have that same kind of youthful appeal. He's not as relatable to all these younger people who are watching him. I just, you know, what's the longevity of these people's career paths? Is it like a flash in the pan or are they going to stick around? Because, you know, we've seen a lot of YouTube fitness people come and go over the years, but some of them stuck around. Um, but, you know, these people are, their their appeal is their youth and that they're like sexy and young and doing this cool shit, right? But that wears off. Um, and I just wonder like where it goes after that. And I don't think we know yet. They just kind of fall off, maybe, and we never hear from them again. Like you will we'll see. You will be shocked how often it happens, and we don't even notice it because there's so many of them, right? Yeah. I was watching Generation Iron, uh, maybe three. The one that had the influencers on it, and there mm -hmm. was that this that young British kid. I can't even remember his name, which is sad. He was like the the it the it kid at the time. He was in Generation Iron three or four, whichever one was the influenced one. And, and I'm like, yo, what happened to this kid? And I went to his IG and he had him posted in like three years. I'm like, holy fuck, is he alive? Like, what the fuck? What happened to this kid? But they disappear sometimes. Maybe they realized that they did. I remember he was trying to get his pro card and he and he failed like, you know, twice or three times, which is nothing. You know, we the, know. The best physique guy? He was, I think he was, I don't think classic was that. Was it best? I think it was bodybuilding. I, 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 I just, uh, uh, Ryan Crowley? No, no, no. This guy, he had a really good physique. He was. <gasps> uh, who, who, which one were you thinking about, Joe? He was I can't British. His name, but I remember the British kid who he was younger, but he was like on his like second or third attempt for a pro card. He didn't get it in the in the movie or whatever. I think he was meant for the action. That's that was meant physique. Yeah. I, I think he was, but but he but he had like a really good physique though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's crazy because after a couple of tries, he gave up, you know, whereas we know that's not how the game goes, bro. Like, you got to – if you want it, it might, it might take more than a couple of tries. It might take more than a couple of tries, you know, but – Sorry, I changed the subject here, but huh? can you guys see that? What's that? That's the USA's trophy. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> For real? Yeah. I like, look at this thing. What happened? What? Ooh. How? It broke? Well, it's actually it's still, move attached. Or what? It's still attached at the ankles. But, uh... <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, uh, well, I was moving, yeah. and it got, like, bent while I was, it was driving in my car, right? Damn. And, uh... <laughs> I tried to put it on the top shelf of that, that bookshelf there, mm -hmm. and it, like, fell over, and it hit the floor, and it's just, like, fucking L-shaped now. Damn. <laughs> so, uh, I, did you, I don't know if I'll fix it. Like, it, I just think it's kind of funny. It's uh, still in one piece, technically, but it's just butchered. I would I would I leave it like that and put it in the case, just like that. 
I think you can get a new one if you call them. Oh, oh I doubt it. The NPC is cheap bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. Did you? Did you? Um, did you get a sword? Still? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, oh damn, he got the sword, man. Yeah, so I know, I know Joe didn't because they stopped doing it. Yeah, yeah, did, did, yeah did, I got like a legit one. That was like, what the fuck? That's a good yeah, one. This is like a navy performance sword or something. That's, that's, that's from that's fucking Legend of Zelda, bro. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> one. Cool, man. I, I, I mean, apparently, I heard people were being assholes and pulling out the sword in the middle of Las Vegas and swinging it around and shit, which is not smart. Yeah, they got some lawsuit or some shit. Like some some dumb girl hurt herself with the sword, and they tried to sue oh. muscle contest. I think that was the no. story. That's why how heard. people are dumb, bro. I'm so silly. <laughs> if if you hurt yourself, you hurt yourself, you know. But they said they're gonna do like a shield now, or something like that. Yeah, they're doing that, which is so so lame. <laughs> I like <laughs> I like the sword, man. The sword, the sword was way cooler. If you won, you know, any overall at the muscle contest, you get this. Everybody wanted the sword, man. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to say I wanted a sword just to just to get a sword. You know? Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. <laughs> you can go to the swap meet, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for 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 this year, they just did a trophy, right? Yeah, the small ones like this. But but they gave you a big trophy as well, no? Yeah, so I have the one that's not broken. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, yours broke too. No, mine isn't broken. Let me yeah, let me let's let's take a look at yours. Oh, there you go. Yeah, What's it? I looked at the, some of the markings one. on that trophy, uh -huh. and it's got like the artist name who like designed the three D model. Yeah, it's from like two thousand one or something. Oh, it's damn. like they haven't changed the trophy in forever. Fucking Nick Tragilli in twenty thirteen was holding up the same trophy. In his yeah, I just saw that shit. Yeah, I saw that. Thing. Thing. What the fuck? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's not good. That's not good. Zaid, Zaid, how's your, are you in off-season mode right now, or, or are you in health phase? No, not yet. I'm going through a health phase right now first. Yeah. Yeah, because you did the, okay, so me, you, and Joe, mm -hmm. I think I think we all synced up, like, like we're mm -hmm. on a same period. Yeah, bro, yeah. trust me, this morning I woke up with my girl and all that, look at me, look how fucking natty I look. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what's funny, yeah. because the, the first, like, I think maybe three weeks, I'm like, oh, this is, yeah, I'm getting I, better. <laughs> I I feel stronger. I, I'm more agile. This is great. And then there was, I think it was last week. I was like, whoa! whoa. I woke up. I'm like, my girl was like, you know how girls are like, oh, you look good. You look like uh, you know, you look healthy. I'm like, oh, look healthy. I look healthy. Look healthy. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, like, no, that's no, the no. worst thing. Like, not like that. You look like leaner. I'm like leaner. Wait, where where, where, where do you see this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, so she was trying to compliment me, but that just meant I, I was looking natty. That's all she was trying to say. Yeah, bro, I, I started looking natty. I started, like, my, all my chest hair started growing back. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I, I started getting, like, pimples and shit. I started getting zits when I come home. Oh, I did right here, too. Like, yeah, bro. Like, what the fuck? It's so random, so. but it's not bad. They're, like, sweat pimples. Like, it's not, like, acne, acne, but. Yeah. You know what it is? No, it's I your body that. telling you it wants drugs. <laughs> it's yeah. a healthy thing to do. And I'm Listen to your body. <laughs> <laughs> the receptors withdrawals. are thirsty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're thirsty. Withdrawals. You know? <laughs> yeah. Now, but to be honest, man, uh, I do, I, I kind of enjoy being off. Around this time, I hate the shots, bro. I don't know if it's only me. I swear, in prep, I'm like plop 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 plop. I don't care. I'm just like boom boom. I don't even feel it. Yeah. But then like off season, I'm like, oh, it's like I don't have the yeah. same savage mindset. I, I just, think your your body gets does. used to the inflammation during prep from injecting so much. Yeah, and it gets better at like dealing with it. That's my yeah, yeah. theory at least. So I'm doing every other day shots. You know, smaller than what I'm shooting in prep. It's like. It is a pain in the ass. It, like it oh, does it tend is. to like be more irritated for some reason. Bro, there's this one shot a week. It hurts for whatever reason. I go in and it physically hurts. I'm like, it's not supposed to hurt. What the fuck is going on? Like as I'm putting it, I'm like, this is shit. Is it's like my body is like sensitive to it or like weak or some shit. I don't know. It's, it's the weirdest. And you don't have the same aggression or like I I don't know what it is, but you don't want to do the shots. And when you do it, it kind of sucks. I keep like procrastinating. It's just the weirdest thing ever. For me, it's yeah. a mental thing. I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not 
I'm going to get huge off these little shots. So I'm just kind of staying the same. <laughs> yeah, you just the forget about here. it. Yeah. Yeah. You forget <laughs> shots so much nowadays. Like, if, if there's just every other day, it's like, I'll go to sleep. And I'm like, fuck, I was supposed to do that. Yeah. I do it in the morning usually. But like in prep, it's like every single day at the end of the day, it's like clockwork, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You got you got you got any plans yet for next year, Stu? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna start at the New York again and then just go basically and try to qualify. Uh, you know, it might take a couple shows, it might take five, who it might not happen. But <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm yeah, anticipating it's happen, dude. It's I hope so. Plan on doing the Cal good. again? Yeah, I mean it's the next weekend. I mean me and Paul uh, are gonna do the Cal. Oh, you are? Yeah, oh, both fuck of us. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, yeah, there you okay. go. That's a good reason to go then. I think it'll be a a, a, a a really good show. You, you got la- two years in a row. Tell 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 uh, Jordan to do it too. We gotta have all three. Oh, you say, That's fucking cool. Yeah, uh, Hutchinson, really. Yeah, Jordan Hutchinson, yeah. Tell him to do it. Shit, dig up uh, Chris Chris Robinson, Chris Dussault. Tell him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> get get every every Mister. He did it like two years ago, right? Chris? Yeah, uh, he did it the year before Stu, right? Yeah, he yeah. was Stu. Tell tell, tell tell Chris Cormier to come back. We get all the you would say. reunion. Oh yeah, <laughs> Brandon Curry is gonna jump in there. Yeah, oh Christ, no! <laughs> you can do the Masters the bit. Everybody's gonna do that. <laughs> but let, let me I'm trying let me, to place dog. <laughs> let me share the screen real quick. Let me go to. Um, yeah, like the yeah. I don't know the Cali judging is always weird. Yeah, you, uh, you, I will you say know. that there were seven judges on the panel, and six of them were women. And it, I, I think it's like the bikini or like you know figure judging panel typically. Uh, and I'm, I don't know. Yeah, the, the, different looking bodybuilders always win that show. Like remember Patrick Moore won it. Like he yeah, doesn't yeah. really win other yeah. shows. He doesn't perform well at like the Olympia. But he's got like a sleek, kind of streamlined look to him, you know. I, I was gonna say something, but I'm doing the USA's next year, so I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah, I probably shouldn't either. <laughs> you want to cut that? <laughs> yeah, I, love, I love the judges. <laughs> I mean, I listen, do, that's some of the best goddamn judging you ever going to see. <laughs> Damn right, the IFBB has never made a bad call in its history. <laughs> we're gonna, you know, we're gonna some of the greatest, the goats right there. But let me, <laughs> this guy, um. Nathan got uh, Nathan got denied, man. I'm kind of yeah. bummed about yeah, that's that. That's so stupid, man. It's unfortunate, bro. It's so unfortunate that uh, you know athletes are suffering what politicians are doing. You know? Bro, at this point, man, I, I think he's right. I think maybe they got to move it around like they used to, because that's not fair, bro. Like you know, Beirut said he was in, and then now I'm hearing that. It's not for sure. I'm like, he seemed excited. Like, oh, I'm, I'm in. Dude, I think there is no fucking way he's getting in right now. <laughs> I'd be shocked if like the Iranians are even talking to our oh. like our government right now. Look at like look what's happening in the Middle East. Yeah, they, they, I, I don't see it. <laughs> I think I, I think he jumped the gun. Maybe he got some good news and he got excited and he was like, yeah. But or maybe he got lost in translation. Maybe yeah. it's like, oh, we made it to the next next step. But it sounded like he was saying, I'm in. I'm good. Listen, uh, until we see that man in, in fucking LAX or at the airport in the U.S., I'm not going to believe it. Even then, I, I got I, I, I to gotta make sure it's, it's a real video. It's a current video because mm. at this point. Poor guy, man. Poor guy. That's so the, that sucks man. because he, he's, he's legitimately qualified. And it's a dream for him to 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 have this qualification. Yeah, this and is like the second the year, by the way, it's the second year. Yeah. in a row, yeah. bro. They gotta give it to him for free. Like if he can get into the next year, twenty twenty four, just like give it to him, give him the qualification he deserves it, oh, bro. Oh, he's, okay. he's gonna beat a lot of good guys, man. He is gonna beat a lot of good guys. Listen, he's basically. A taller hottie with a smaller waist, maybe not as muscular, but shredded, full. He he might be rounder and more aesthetic. I mean, he bro, he's gonna beat a lot of guys that we don't even think he can beat. You know, yeah. as shredded as uh, as Brett, Brett Wilkin was, he was more shredded than Brett Wilkin. I'm like, how did that even happen? I, I thought it doesn't get much more shredded than Brett. 
Well, Brett, bad. Brett's like really hard in the glutes because you got yeah. those crazy like dugout glutes, right? He's got the lines there, but so is Beirut's. And then like you know, from other angles, I think he beats him, like the pec striations, yeah. you know, the arms, um, the separation there. There's only so many people who you, I can't get those anymore. I, I used to get those chest lines when I was lean. It doesn't it doesn't come out anymore, man. Do you shoot your pecs? <laughs> no, I, I I don't shoot my pecs. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes get them. Like I, I had like one on each side, but it wasn't like it wasn't like like that. You had one line on each side. <laughs> yeah, I, like I had one line here, one line here, but it wasn't it wasn't doing that. But same with like my 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 breaking. I don't know. I, I think maybe when as you put on muscle, maybe the way you put on muscle. Who knows? But some some lines. I get some new lines and I lose some old lines. But this guy, he just keeps getting lines. I like this guy. Well, like uh, fucking uh, Derek Lunsford, right? It looks yeah. like he has some striation in his pecs this year, which is cool. But like in the past, he's always been like, there's not been a lot of separation through his pecs and, and delts. And they look kind of flat. And part of it's because they are a little flat. But Boom. part of it is also because they're that. just like... They're not popping out as much because there's not lines that are like making you look at it, you know. I gotta be honest, man. As great as Derek is, I don't think we've seen close to his best. I think even last year in open, I think he was very flat, even though yeah, he looks extremely muscular. The way he his legs sick. you see, the way his legs look four weeks out, I get yeah. it. Is there some body fat there, but not enough to lose that much on your legs? Literally. His legs looked hotty size or bigger, and then on stage there was there were near hotty size. So I still yeah. think he's losing a lot of fullness. May, his metabolism must be out of this world because he gained all this stage weight and still came in flat. So if he actually comes in, well, then also you can say maybe if if he was bursting full, his chest and arms would be softer. Maybe it's a balancing act, right? But but still, if he was bursting full with that condition. I don't think anybody in the world can beat Derek. I got to be honest with you. Yeah, when he wins, and he will win eventually, I think this year it's going to be a dynasty, man. He's uh, he's he's not human. Like his Look back is side just chest over there. Yeah, he he only he only the only person I think that can beat Derek at his best. But there's a lot of ifs, right? Derek is consistent. He's already proven. But I think Samson. Shredded could be him, but that's an if. Like we have, no, he won't ever him. get that. No, the gluten ham game. Like, that's the thing. That's what I mean. Like, will he ever be able to get shredded as he should? Maybe from the front, but from the back, I don't know. Well, yeah. I don't even know if it's a conditioning thing because you look at his hamstrings and they're dug out, like they're separated. They look good. Yeah, I don't think it's. But then his glutes just don't have that cheese grater look to him. You know that like crazy lines. Well, we we seen Samson as shredded as you can get at the Arnold, and he still didn't have the cheese grated glutes. But you look at his lower back; there was all kind of feathering, and his chest were doing all kind of ripples. So the body yeah. fat is, is gone. There's no body fat there. It's just a, a, maybe a genetic thing. So I mean, I I have like one line in my glute. The skin on my on my ass is like real thin, man. Even top to bottom, there's just not lines there. Um, the worst example of that that I can think of is Juan Morel because he would be super peeled, and oh, he, you yeah. know, you could in person you can tell that skin is just paper thin, but yeah. then it's just like there's no lines, it's just like yeah. smooth, you know, and there's not all this shit going on. Um, it, there's quite a few people who don't necessarily get lines, but yeah. the judges, if you ask the judges for feedback, they'll tell you your glutes have to be hard, they don't actually have to be shredded for you to win. But, I know, but you know, like, it's like it's eye catching, dude. Like, yeah, if, if somebody <laughs> has it and you don't, they do yeah. get, they do get, do they, they get more points on you, right? It's a bells and whistles thing, yeah, hundred yeah. percent, hundred percent. So, will that hold him back? I mean, maybe not if he's so overwhelming. But uh, listen, these guys are big too. They're all big, right? So, how how big would he have to be to overwhelm overwhelm them? I don't, I don't know. Realistically, you would have to put your money on Derek, you know. Yeah, he's a, consistency. He's the most... Like the the track record is just there, and he's got Hani, you know. 
Exactly. I mean, Milos is pretty good at what he does, but he's not as consistent as Hani is. No, because because um, he tries to knock it out the park, you know, like a like a Jack yeah. Nichols. So they'll either be phenomenal or they'll be a little bit off. Yeah. But this guy, this guy ain't coming off. You know, I mean, even off because technically he was flat, right? So his off is a little bit of flatness, which is not that big of a deal. You rather his off the second best in the world. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You rather, if you're gonna be off, you rather be you rather be flatter than spilled, right? You know, I I was flatter. You would say when I got first call, I got fourth. When I was spilled over, I got second call out, right? So you rather be off on the flatter side than to be than to be. You don't want to be spilled over. Yeah, right? especially yeah. when you got guys like Hottie and guys like Nick who are just super hard. Although I think Derek was harder. In the glutes and hams and back yeah, than so. than than Hottie was last yeah. year, but you know in other parts like the packs and the front shots, he didn't he didn't beat him there. And um, so everybody's saying this is Photoshop. I, I could see why they're saying that because it looks so ridiculous. But if you go to his YouTube video, you just watch the video where they screenshot it from, and this is how his back looks. Obviously, without the filters, right? I, I think it's just like a wide angle or a, a, a lens thing. When you take a picture on your phone, it yeah. doesn't look like that. No, you know? it won't. But then also, Derek doesn't do his own video content. So it's not him. I don't, I don't believe it's him screenshotting the video. I believe it's his camera guy. So yeah. he wouldn't Photoshop his own pictures. And come on, like, what the fuck? Why, why would he, let, let's be real here. He knows everybody's watching him with a microscope. He's not about to Photoshop his last, but... I mean, this this is how his fucking last look two weeks out. I mean, it don't look that far off even on stage. I got to be honest with you. His last are, his back is the best, probably the best back on that stage, you know. But you go watch the videos. I mean, this is, you know, this is ridiculous. You go watch the videos. <laughs> Why do we even bother, man? Fuck. Yeah, man. And he's not even black. Like, that's the crazy yeah, thing. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he got the muscle bellies for sure, you know. Dude. But then he also had the condition that a, a, a lot of the black guys, you know, we have the muscle around us, but we don't get necessarily the the hardness he gets. Not that he's even – he's not even super hard. He's conditioned. He just has no body fat on his body because yeah. he's not grainy neither, you know. He's just fucking shredded. He's shredded and he's round. He's also, like, not even 30. So, like, I think he's, like – he might have turned 30 this year or something. I think so. I think, I think recently, yeah. give it a few yeah. years, and it's it's gonna get grainy, you know. Yeah, but yeah, like you said, the striations on his chest, we're seeing it now. I, I honestly just think like he just comes in a little, uh, a little flat. I think if it's pushing out, I think I think he's gonna have it. It won't look like Hottie's, but neither yeah. does Hottie's back. Hottie's backside doesn't look like Derek's neither. So, you know, they they used to say Olympia is one from the back, but. I don't think it is, but you just, now you're just trading shots. Yeah, Plus, this, like, is, this is the year they want an ambassador, I think. They want somebody that holds the title, that wants to do something with the title and speak to the fans. We all uh, want that. Do, yeah, yeah. I, I, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's going to play a big role, I think. I think. And I think Samson from the back is just like – He's he's a level behind these guys. It's improving for sure. Like he's yeah. been, he, he's put a ton of tissue onto his back, but just the way it's put together and how it inserts and everything is just not quite as next level as, as these guys. He has a this perfect a perfect yeah. set of abs, bro. Like That's perfect abs. symmetry. He has yeah. ten, bro. He has ten perfect abs. Yeah. What Must be nice. That's that. <laughs> I barely <laughs> touch six. <laughs> yeah, <Always the> faded <laughs> bottom ones. <laughs> oh, like like forget a hernia. You can't even see the man's belly button. He don't even have a belly. Button. <laughs> so, yeah. so it looks, it looks like a waffle. <laughs> That's how perfect he is. He doesn't have a belly button. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? His, his abs are so perfect. The belly button just said, "You know, I'm not even gonna fuck this up," and it just disappeared. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. That's insane. And this is what I mean about the legs, bro. As crazy as his legs are. Weeks out from the show, I feel like they should be big on stage if he's full, you know. Yeah, yeah. there's not one missing body part on him. No man, no man. He used to have smaller arms, but I think uh, I think he's probably jimmy those up a bit. I know Hani does that with some of his guys. 
Mm-hmm. So, because I mean, like he's got bigger arms now, but there's not a lot of separation there. It doesn't look bad, but yeah, it's, yeah. you can kind of yeah. tell like, hey man, it's a it, it's a trade off, you know. You want yeah, I mean, couple, you can't you have small <laughs> arms at that level. You just cannot. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, hey, th- th- there's a few guys who don't have any any splits, you know, or or lines in their calves, and that's not by accident, but. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. It's it's hard out here, man. It's hard. The difference out here. is they judge your arms. They don't give a shit about your calves. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> the, sausage, the sausage arm action. But honestly, man, I don't think everybody needs huge arms. I think it it can be if it's glaring, you need to. But I've never looked at Derek and be like, ah, some is is throwing me off. You know, even when his arms weren't big. Yeah. It never, in good, good proportion now. It all fits. It Same with Regan, right? He don't have the peaks, yeah, and the roundness necessarily in his arms, but it looks good. You know, it doesn't it doesn't throw it off any in any way to me. The only time I've ever seen somebody who has arms that kind of look too big is Nick, because <laughs> they're just so insane, right? But and then he doesn't he doesn't have super wide shoulders, and he doesn't have like you know uh, a flowing midsection and torso, right? So yeah. it's just like this thing sticking out there, and it's like, whoa, takes you off guard. Yeah, it's it's insane. It's insane. Oh, we didn't get your your top five picks. Uh, oh, uh, okay. I hate doing this, but uh, Derek first, mm-hmm. Hotty second, mm-hmm. Nick third. I I I cannot put Nick behind Samson just because of the conditioning thing, and I think. In my opinion, he should have won the Arnold pose for pose and conditioning wise. He was like so far ahead. Uh-huh. I think he should have won that, but I understand why they would give it to the prettier looking guy. Yeah. Uh, Samson fourth. Who's left? I, hmm. You got uh, Brandon, Andrew. Brandon, Andrew. Uh, a, a lot of people uh, dropped out. Hunter. Ram, not doing it. Well, Hunter. Yeah, Hunter looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, dude. Hunter's. Like he got fucking peeled for the first like for the first time like really hard this year, you know. Yeah. And if he shows up like that, you know, he does have a little better shape than Nick. He's got better quad sweep and legs, and um, I don't I don't know if he can beat Nick, but I think he could take fifth. Hmm. Um, but but, uh, he, but he, 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 he did lose Andrew. Him. Yeah, fuck, yeah, he did Andrew. Yeah. I I think Andrew was too soft for the Olympia at the Texas, but he was so overwhelming at the Texas that, you know, it, it just looked like a man and a boy almost. Cause he's so much taller and so much bigger and so much fuller everywhere. Yeah. Um, he's so much darker too. That, that, that plays a role. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't hurt. Yeah, but, yeah, you me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think fifth place could go to either Hunter or Andrew. Um, yeah. But when, you know, when the conditioning is Olympia level conditioning is like next level. Um, yeah. Uh, the way that they've been judging the rest of the season versus that specific show is not always the same. Mm-hmm. You know, there's uh, sometimes they start pushing things in a certain direction, you know, for sure. I think that's probably why Samson won the Arnold. They like his aesthetic physique. Um, you know, I could think of some other examples uh, this year of guys who won, who, you know, got demolished in a lot of other ways, but like they were very pretty looking they had good physiques and like, they're they have a, they have an appealing look right? yeah, yeah, yeah um hunter has a very good bodybuilding look and if he brings that conditioning like that's going to be next level for him but like he's not like pretty looking you know yeah, yeah. you know yeah um not like his dad at least he's got a little bit you know the lats don't pop out quite as symmetrically and far and just little stuff like that you know I saw I saw uh Fuad and Ian get into that discussion about it, it sounded like Fuad was saying the judges are deciding where it goes and Ian was saying, well, they can only judge what's in front of them. So the athletes decide. I think I have to lean more to the judges, if I'm being honest, because you still pick because if you have okay, you have Ross and Tonio, who are you gonna pick? It is it, now you're splitting hairs. Like, are you gonna go with well, he's more shredded? Well, Tony is more bubbly. Well, Ross, you know what I'm saying? So you, you, it's kind of up to the judges to what they pick there kind of sets the tone. Same with, with Samson and Nick. Do we go with muscularity, graininess, or do we go with muscularity and shape? So, yes, you're judging what's there, 
but you have to judge it. See, picking one over the other really does change the landscape. Even Hunter and Andrew, you can say, well, taller, maybe lankier looking physique, but really aesthetic, you know, in good shape. Where Hunter was bone dry shredded, uh, more, I guess, maybe um, he was more, I would say he was more muscular. Like, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah, he filled out his physique more. And he was very balanced, didn't really have any weaknesses. His back used to be his weaknesses. At that show, his back was a strong point. Very good, yeah. You know, glutes were in more than Andrew, hamstrings were in. So what do you pick? I mean, I liked how Andrew looked better personally, but I could see how, how Hunter could win as well. He could make a great argument for Hunter winning. So it's like he was winning. He was winning physically. He just exactly. lost it because he didn't pose as as long. You're right. Yeah, you're right. So, so I, I, I could see that because as they were posing, Hunter, he he stopped hitting that vacuum and he was breathing really hard. Uh, and he you. starts to sweat too. He likes he usually starts to sweat. So you know he told me when I guest posed with him at the Emerald Cup, he that? didn't get he got tanned up beforehand, but he he didn't get glazed. And he said, "I make my own glaze when I'm in the off season because he sweats so fucking much." <laughs> oh yeah, uh, he was somebody boring, else said that. Bro. You know what the trick is? <laughs> Tell him to put Vaseline. Somebody, some other guy did that, and he stopped sweating. He put a little oh, bit yeah. of Vaseline, and and it 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 almost like clogs your your pores, so the sweat doesn't come out. It's not it healthy. It Still looks like gloss. It does, but a little bit. If you put too much, you're gonna look like a damn honey bun. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say uh, Vaseline over the ten. No, uh, I I don't know which order he did it, but I think he's putting a little bit over the ten before he puts the glaze. I saw it on on MD. It was. Um, oh, I think you'd have to put the tan Rufio. on Rufio. first, otherwise it wouldn't stick to your skin. It wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't so it must be tan, a little Some Vaseline, Rufio. and then maybe glaze on top. It, it was a uh, a uh, uh, Theo Theo. Uh, I won't even try to say his last name, but the the French body. Oh, Laguerre. Yeah, him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He he said he was putting uh, Vaseline to stop the sweating, and it was working like a charm. So that could work for Hunter, but. I mean, don't try it at Olympia. Don't don't let that be the first time you try it. <laughs> a little Hail Mary there. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah we, we're not going to do that. that, that Sounds that, like that. some Preparation H <laughs> trickery. You guys know that stuff, right? Yeah. Preparation yeah, H, yeah, the but... hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck Who happened? had me Hunter? do that the first year I worked with him? And I was like, dude, I'm never doing this again. Because he had me smearing on my ass cheeks like every single night from like three weeks out into the oh, show. Man. I was like... Never again, dude. <laughs> did, but, but did, it, did it work? Oh, you know, you I don't know, know, man. I don't know. I don't. I don't know which way was up during that prep. I was all fucked up at the end. <laughs> Vaso burn works the best. If you guys ever tried it out, no, what's I that? Haven't. Vaso what's burn. It? Uh, it's a thermogenic gel by MPA. Uh, you remember Matt Porter? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has. Does that a, actually he work? A, oh, really? dude, honestly, man, I never prepped without it. To be honest. Oh. Every morning before fasted cardio, glutes, hands, and abs, uh, it makes your fucking skin burn like hell. Think about yeah. it as a pre-workout for your fat cells. For your ass. Because, <laughs> well, or, yeah, anywhere you put it, and it, it actually brings the blood into that area, and uh, eventually it helps you get thinner skin within that spot. And that yeah. kind of makes sense. I used to, like, foo-foo all that crap, but, like, I don't know. I kind of... I, I mean, obviously, nothing is going to replace your diet. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, if you're looking yeah. for everything, actually, yeah. I, I think I asked you about this. By have you ever tried Helios? Like the I, I, I was just about to say that. Yeah, but I found out I was doing it wrong. So I, I, I was injecting it straight into my ass, like my you know my my the side awesome. of my, my my ass, and it was leaving a little bit of knots. And then after I, I, after I said, oh, fuck it, I'm not doing this. And I was done with the prep. Somebody said, no, 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 inject it in the skin, like in, yeah, so in, the, in cute, the fat. Right? And I was yeah. like, oh, that, may, that makes more sense because he's trying to burn the fat. <laughs> I was yeah. just burning fucking muscle in my ass cheeks or some shit. I don't know what oh, the fuck That's going to hurt. <laughs> so I was like, fuck, okay, well, now I know for next time. So next time I try it, <laughs> <laughs> I might try it next time. So. Let's I kind of want to try that too, you know. It's like because, like, if I, if I have any lines in my glutes, like they're going to be up top, and maybe I just need to get it dug out more. Yeah, maybe that yeah, could yeah. help. I don't know. So, so Compton is like myself; he's a non-believer, right? Yeah. So I was like, Compton, does this work? He said, Yes. I'm like, Oh, Compton said Helios works. 
I'm going to believe it because he's he's going to be the one thing. That's just very bullshit. skeptical. Yeah, yeah. He, like, he calls bullshit on everything. Like, <laughs> exactly. So so yeah. if he says yes, I'm like, oh, I got it, but I got to do it the right way. I got to try it the right way. So I don't know why I, I didn't do it that way, but yeah, I, I pretty much tried everything, man. Uh, I, I, I fucking tried. I tried DMP before, man. Oh be yeah, oh, shit. But I got to be. It was complete shit. It was horrible. It's awful. <laughs> it's so bad, bro. Can I tell my DMP story? <laughs> I, I don't think. Go ahead. I was thinking, okay. go ahead. Okay, so oh, when man. I first started taking gear, this was in 2017, it's right after my first show. I was like, I had, didn't have a coach. I didn't have any friends who were into it, like who knew, you know, what to tell me. So I was getting all my advice from Tony Huge, like his YouTube. <laughs> oh, right? so oh my I was God. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> think about that. That's horrible. Whoa, right? uh, holy shit. And this was when he was all hot on, like, I'm taking a bunch of DNP and it lets me cheat on my diet and I still get shredded. Bad at yeah, Hogwarts, my friend. I'm like, oh yeah, maybe this will. So that's <laughs> I, I got ready for a second show that I never talk about because it was so fucking terrible. Uh, <laughs> I was like, literally, I was on like, it was like four, six, seven hundred milligrams of DNP or something. Holy oh, shit! It was a Damn. lot, and it was summer. There was no AC where I was. I like, I probably should have died honestly. And I, at the meantime, I was taking a bunch of T3 and Clen and like. You know, just like every other drug I get my hand on. A bunch of trend, too. Just like the dumbest shit ever. And I showed up at that show, like, not in shape. You know, I looked like I was four or five weeks out still. Because I was, like, I was cheating, like, probably every two to three days. Like, just binging. Mm -hmm. And, it, it, like, you know, you get super flat. You're super lethargic. You can barely train and move. Uh, it was Bad. never going to do that again. Never. <laughs> DMP DMP stands for uh, did not place because you're gonna look so fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean it, it works. <laughs> like it, it fucking it works, right? But like I don't know, with the amount of food that I eat in the off season Bro. going into a prep, it's just so unnecessary now. So Man, unnecessary. I, I took um first I, I tried <laughs> I, I had asked when I first did it, I had asked uh Boston Lloyd, I was like, which is the best one I should take? He said, do the injectable, bro. I said, yeah, injectable. They okay. make that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they they make oh, it. Oh. I Dude, got that's this. That's fucking deadly. It <laughs> it looked like it looked like like how your piss looks on Halo. <laughs> that, that's not what it looked like. But it, but, but it was oh. thick like a gel. And I pulled it. I'm like, whoa. So then uh, I touched it a little bit. And my finger got a little hot. I was like, whoa, okay. But you know, <laughs> when you're in your early 20s, you was, I was a nut. So I was like, fuck it. And I, boom, I did it. And uh, the area started burning up. I'm like, oh, shit. Ooh, this is crazy. And then um, yeah, I actually didn't feel much. I, I, I looked at the, the dose. I probably did like 50 milligrams. I tried 100. The whole shit nodded up. So I didn't feel anything. So I was like, it was so painful. I was like, I'm not doing injective. I'm like, okay, I'm going to switch to oral. I switched to oral. I was like, he's like, okay, you probably should do double of oral, which is injectable. So I thought, like, okay, I did 400. Ooh. <laughs> I, I kind of felt like, I don't even know how to describe it. I felt like uh, there's no energy, no no uh, motivation to do anything, basically. You, yeah. you feel like how you would feel, I don't know, a, a week out maybe, but without even dieting. You just feel like that. Yeah. All day long. So you didn't I don't want to work out. I don't want to do anything. I'm like, what's the point of the fat burner if I can't do shit to burn the fat? I'm like, <laughs> I, I'd rather just do cardio, you know, do I'd rather do two hours of cardio than sit at home and not be able to move. Like, what's the point? So it was counter, it was counterproductive, you know. It does burn fat, obviously, but I think it burns everything, bro. I think it just burns everything. It burns yeah. your whole body. Everything burns is you to the ground. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> well, well, think about it. If, if you take too much, it burns you to death. So if you take the right amount, it's just kind of burning you half to death, right? So <laughs> it's really not it feels like it. I it, think I've heard some people talk about using it like briefly in like low to moderate dosages during like a little um, a mini cut to like mm -hmm. reset your insulin sensitivity because it's actually very good for that. It um, is? Yeah, just like, you know, drop your food down a lot, you know, do a quick couple weeks of DNP and it will reset your insulin sensitivity really quickly, actually. 
I might, I, mean, I might try that next week. <laughs> no, <laughs> would not recommend it. There's other ways to do it, obviously, but like that's a non insanely dangerous way to do it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Or at least a use case for it. Tony, I heard Tony. if you want to make sure it's real, light up the pill mm-hmm. on fire. It should yeah. explode. Yeah, it burns. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. You could also lose a damn eye doing it. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's two different forms of it that are like slightly different potency. There's like a crystal version and a powder version. They got crystal uh, DMP? Yeah. It's it's like little smoke yellow crystals. Shit. Yeah. Smoke. Maybe. <laughs> and I'll bet someone in LA has done that, dude. Somebody smoked. Ask something. around. Yeah. Yeah. But I think they're like they're significantly different potency, so you got to know what you're getting um, as far as dosing. I got to be honest, man. Um, I would recommend everybody <laughs> stay clear of that. But you know, when you say yeah. that, it's gonna make the somebody I take the people take it. They're gonna be like, stay away from it. Say no more. Yeah, well, let me, let me, let me go buy two. <laughs> <laughs> but is it hard to get for? Is that considered hard to get for people? I, I think it's kind of hard to get for most people. I I haven't looked in years. You know. Yeah, you know, if I asked around, I could probably find it, but I just why would I? You could probably get it from Tony Hughes, right? Do, do, doesn't he have? <laughs> I don't know what that dude's up to, man. I don't follow him at all. Like, I think, I think, I think he kind of after Leo died, he was making a bunch of videos. I feel like he went into hiding after after he he was being watched. I remember seeing uh, <laughs> they were like watching him and stalking him and time. He's like somebody's following me and shit. And I'm like, is he paranoid? <laughs> they really fucking follow him. So I think he kind of went into hiding. I, I think uh, we still don't know how Leo died. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, I don't know if you saw, but on Leo's channel, re- like a day or two ago, I did they uploaded. That. Yeah, they uploaded the last podcast he did with Blue and Ariella, and it's so eerie because it's from like January this year. You know, right before oh. he died, it was like a day or two before. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't see that. I thought you were talking about that. Uh, in memory of video they posted yeah they also posted that but like a couple days ago they put up the whole podcast you know blue told me about it he's like i don't know who uploaded this but you know they uploaded our podcast on there so and in the description of that video it said we're going to be releasing some information regarding leo's death and we're trying to get some media investigation into this whatever happened so i don't know the mystery thickens i guess but he doesn't know who the hell's running that one one thing I do know is once the crime scene is compromised, you will never get to the bottom of it because yeah. there were it were people running around, girls and uh, prostitutes all around, and the cops and and Tony. No offense, Tony Hughes, but he was there too. I, I don't fucking know if he could be cleaning shit up. I'm not saying he would do that, but it, it's just compromised. You can't. If I come to a crime scene and y- y'all having a party there, what the fuck? How how how, how do we? How do we settle who do, we can't? There's so much shit that could have been, you know, skewed or like you, you just can't go about a crime scene that way. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if they're ever going to find out, which is, I mean, from any conversation I've had with Leo, I like Leo personally. Uh, he had he demons. Very kind to me. Yeah, I, I've never seen that side to him. I know it exists because I, I, I've heard recordings and stuff. But listen, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. There's a side of me you guys haven't seen. You might think I'm a dick if you saw that side of me. You know, but it, nobody's perfect. You know, it, is I? I think he was a good person deep down inside. Whether or not, whether or not everybody agrees with that, I thought he was a good person. I, I like him personally. Same with Boston. I thought Boston was a great guy. He took the words out of my mouth, dude. You like know? bodybuilding needs those guys more than ever right now. Like I, I just like I saw all the fucking shows this year, and I was thinking, dude, Boston and Leo would have had a field day with this shit. Yeah. Like just like some of the the calls and like the sport, it's just you know a thing. Every time I talk to one of his friends, he's like, "Man, we're like, man, I wish he was here for this. It would have <laughs> been so funny, you know." It, it's like uh, I think you, you had to know them a little better to realize that they were good guys. Because media, media, social media is that's not real life, man. That's just not no, real you life. just gotta appreciate. It. It's like. Like he, there was there wasn't a bad bone in his body. What he was saying, like it was he believed it, but he didn't mean ill by it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like he didn't want to hurt people. Besides maybe Phil Viz. Fuck that guy. Yeah, he but like <laughs> <laughs> but, but like overall, like, yeah, he he's a sweetheart, man. And you know, he told the truth because he couldn't do anything else. I would say, I mean, he early on he helped me out a lot without ever charging me a dime or anything like that. 
same with uh same with Leo. He gave me some really good advice and never charged me or anything like that. They they don't have to do that. They just did that because they love they love doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, that's that's the side of them I know, and that's really all what I care about to 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 know. You know what I'm saying? And everybody who is close with him, you know, like his old friends and stuff, like they do not have anything bad to say about him. And that really says something. Exactly. Like the people who actually knew him and spent time with him were like, yeah, he's the worst loss ever, you know. I, I actually had him on, on my podcast, my original one. That was, I don't know how long ago now, That's a while back. But uh, I want to have uh, uh, his his wife on. Ariella, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I, I want to have uh, Ariella, Ariella on. Actually, I was talking to her not not too late. She because she did a show, mm-hmm. she did a show recently. She was shredded, bro. She was shredded, you know. So I might I might have her on at, at, at some point. Yeah, she was thinking about doing North Americans after that, um, and she would I think she would have mopped mopped up there, but uh, I think she was just sick of it. She was like, I got a I got a son, you know, got other yeah, shit yeah. to worry about, so. She she does physique or figure? I think she did bodybuilding. Oh, holy shit! Show. Okay, okay. Because okay. uh, yeah. she always used to compete in bodybuilding. I think she 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 did it at that point. I don't know if she if she changed over or not. Let me see if we got some questions real quick. If we got some questions from IG. Oh boy, those are always good. Yeah. yeah. They By love. The the, way, I heard that Boston's mom is doing a documentary about his life uh, did, and they're doing a whole thing about it. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did hear about that too. Oh, this is a good one. What? I feel like we kind of, did we talk about this? What were you guys uh, first show experience? Like, did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you know you had potential, et cetera? Let's start with, uh, it, let's start with Zay. Cause Zay, Zay is up here too. Yeah. Uh, me personally, man, the first show, uh, I wanted to make a statement that I actually, uh, I want to push as far as I can, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, push what you talking about pushing, pushing, totally, the and no, uh, <laughs> not yet, not yet, but uh, it was, it was, it was, uh, you know, your first show as a bodybuilder. So mm-hmm. you have to be in a good shape, you know, and this was my first show ever. And, uh, I did keto for eight weeks, two hours of cardio, Dang. zero carbs, uh, 350 grams of protein, oh, and, and I got shredded, but I got small, you know, mm-hmm. and I was self-coaching myself. I got third place that year. Good old self LA show. LA show. Yeah, it was a good, a good show when uh, the regional shows actually had first and second call-offs, you know. It's true. Uh, and then that was a really good experience, you know. So just finishing that race itself. And then the next weekend I did another show. Uh, I got second place. And then I did another show. Yeah. And I got second place again, you yeah. know. That's, you did three shows your first season. Oh, you, I did. Yeah. You don't, they yeah. don't play around. They don't play. Oh, around. dude, I love competing. It's in my fucking blood. Uh, so if you're in good shape, why not keep trying? You know. Yeah, and, I think uh, I think Zayd has the best mindset toward competing. Man, like I always always see how grateful and happy he was to be there, and I'm like, wow, that's great. Some people are just stressed out, and I'm like, damn, bro, relax. It's, the hard work is done, bro. Calm down, man. You know, Zayd is always super chill, nicest guy, and just grateful. Listen, you gotta be grateful to be alive and healthy enough to do this shit. This is expensive. Be grateful you you have the money to do this shit because you could be broke and not be able to do this shit. I mean, and honestly, can- that's it right there. Because of that, you can do it. Why not be extremely grateful about it? Because it can go away uh, in any second. Exactly, you know? and we we got a good ten years to do this. That's not a that's not a long time. I mean, dude, that's not gonna fly by, you know. All right, so you it was, you did pretty it good. was fun, dude. It was fun, but it was my worst fucking rebound. I gained thirty six pounds in eight days. Damn. Oh, I Ooh. blew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't muscle, obviously. I literally looked like I never did a show. Uh, two weeks, uh, two weeks into my rebound. It's like this guy never competed ever before. Yeah. It was my worst fucking rebound because I, I was so hungry. I didn't understand. Like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I was, I, 
I would eat, eat, eat. My stomach would extend, but my mind would would not feel satisfied. I would want to eat more, more, more. Yeah, that, that happened to uh, one of my clients, bro. Literally seen him at the gym two days later. He said, "What's up, baby?" I'm like, uh, I'm like I was thinking, "Who are you? Like, who is this guy?" And it, it took me like two seconds. I was, oh shit, that's that. He was unrecognizable, bro. His head was like this. I said, "Oh my god, this is the guy has been eating that stuff." It's crazy. What, what can happen on a rebound? He said, "Bro, I could not stop. I couldn't stop eating. I just, I thought I was there's something wrong with me." I'm like, "No, this is normal, but you're gonna kill yourself. You're gonna, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have to stop. You know, stop eating that something. Uh, <laughs> That's not gonna go well." But my, you couldn't my, stop eating. My record after a show is 24 pounds in 24 hours. I uh, oh. it was after that that train wreck show that I was just talking about when I started taking drugs. And I didn't even go to finals of that show. So I just went to pre-judging. I was in like the back of the second call out and light heavy. It was terrible, right? Yeah. So I went to an Izzy's buffet. I don't know if they have those where you guys are, but it's like a fucking American, just sloppy food buffet. I spent three hours in there just straight eating. Oh, it was, shit. and then I didn't stop when I got home, you know, <laughs> it was <laughs> fucking bad. <laughs> Yeah. You skip skip finals to go eat at a buffet. That's yeah, bad. I was so pissed, man. I was just like, yeah. I, I just looked at what I had done for the last uh, like twenty weeks of just abusing drugs and like how I looked on stage. I was like, what am I doing? Like, yeah. I just just like I just totally reset after that. I was like, okay, get your shit together, make a plan, do this properly, and man. Uh, you experience. Know, <laughs> when you say that. That year you won USA's, bro, my girl had to drag me to that finals. I was like, fuck this shit. Oh. I'm like, I ain't going to finals. I was just eating the shit. It was bad. Bro, this shit, it's a fragile sport, bro. This shit, you, you bust your ass to get damn second call out? You yeah. want to you wanna punch the damn uh, announcer in that, in that motherfucker. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it fucking sucks. <laughs> All right, I, so, what, what we're going to get, get there, though. I promise. We're going to turn pro next year. If I don't, I'm punching the announcer. Like I said, no, stop. No, you're not. <laughs> we throwing yeah. tomatoes, yo. Bring the tomatoes, yo. It's- <laughs> I got you, man. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, uh, Stu, what was your uh, my first prep? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, was, well, that, was that it? Was the well, no, that was that was the second show, the train wreck show that I did. Damn. The the but the first one. Um, self coaching, you know, self coaching. Yeah, I was self coaching. I had a buddy who'd done some men's physique shows beforehand he was like he was telling me to do like the like the cyclic keto diet so basically what i did was like i had no carbs all week a little bit of fat mostly just protein and then on the weekends i would just binge basically <laughs> i called it like a refeed refeed yeah come on everybody like, knows I that actually, i usually got pretty lean but like i was so at the time i was living in a fraternity house uh, i was in a frat and even you know, you can imagine how easy that was prepping for a show in a frat. And, you know, they had this kitchen down there with this cereal bar. And it's just all the fucking cereal you could eat. So oh. that's what I would do on the weekends, which is fucking oh. annihilate the cereal bar. Um, and, like, I got way leaner than I probably should have during that prep. Um, but, like, you know, I wasn't in shape, like, properly. Um, but, yeah, that was, fuck, I was 19. It was in 27. Yeah, so I was 19. Uh, and you know, once I got on stage, I was like, this is awesome. And, you know, my buddy was like, yeah, you got some potential here. You just need like a lot more muscle. I was like, okay, I got to take, take drugs then. <laughs> so then I like, you know, do it. and then the, the train wreck transpired and that was a long time ago, but yeah, that's kind of where it all started. Um, I knew that like, I, I actually did classic my first show. Cause like, I was originally just going to do board shorts. Cause I was like, Duh, I'm not big enough and we can't do any of these. Yeah real classes and then somebody convinced me to do classic instead um and then i was like man with this weight cap there's no way i'm ever gonna look good yeah like at that weight cap so i was like you know gotta send it um do open so it, it seems like the reoccurring theme if you want to do really well at your first show make sure you do one of them keto diets with those refeeds it didn't do very well self, and self-coach <laughs> always self-coach your first show self yeah. do that's all you need. Just do you a little keto diet, you know, basic, you know, gram and a half protein. Hop on that refeed on the weekends, baby. And if you, if you want to take it to the next <laughs> level, 
do it from the damn for, for, uh, fraternity fraternity room. Yeah, and you want to yourself. And then the, the following year, you want to step it up, do some DMP, and you good to go. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna All be a pro. Method. <laughs> These are pros we're talking to here. So if you want to turn pro, you know what you got to do, baby. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I think a lot of good bodybuilders like back in the day, they all have stories like that. Just I'm super sure. dumb shit that they've done. I th- I'm sure we all have it, you know. Yeah. But you look back on it and you laugh like, oh, glad I survived that shit. You know? <laughs> but you, you, you're also you're also not you, bro. Like when you're dieting for these shows, this is why coaching is important. Like knowledge wise, I think we all have the knowledge to coach ourselves. True. But we're fucking nutcases, bro. Like should be going smooth, and then you just you you lose your head. Like you're hungry. You don't know what the fuck. You justify shit. Like you don't yeah. even know what the fuck is going on at that point. So, I do believe, and even even let's say John Jewett, right? People say, well, he's self coach himself. Yeah, he's he's almost forty. First of all, and he's had a bunch of coaches, and he has eyes. People think like he doesn't have. He he has. Uh, he say he has. Uh, what's his? Uh, Chris Tuttle watches him because you got to have and, stuff and his wife point. yeah exactly his wife yeah, and his uh business partner what's the other what's the other guy's name what's the other coach oh luke something luke boom so he yeah. has eyes watching him and his wife is a formidable formidable you know herself she knows exactly what the fuck she's doing so it's not like he's at home with the door locked looking at himself right that's not gonna give you the best picture he, he bounces it off other people too so even at that point one man can just can't you can't be that subjective to or objective to yourself. And can I just say something about John Jewett? He looked he looked really good at his shows this year. Obviously, he won the one and he got second at the the Legion. He could have won. Um, I, I, yeah, arguably he could have won. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, he preaches like this really methodical kind of low dose approach to bodybuilding, mm-hmm. which is fine and all. But like, you got to remember that like he used to be coached by Matt Jansen. Like he's oh, been coached by like, oh yeah, this was years ago now, but I mean, he's like, the guy was not always modest with the drugs that he takes. You know, mm-hmm. he put on a lot of tissue in the past using more gear, like, you know, typical cycles that, you know, most of us probably do, yeah. you know, nothing crazy, but like, you know, normal shit. Uh, and now he looks like he does, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And he's able to prep and maintain that physique with significantly less and you know the lesson there is like you don't have to keep on pushing high doses when you already have a lot of tissue right for That's sure, good. For sure. yeah. but like if he's trying to sell people that like i built this physique using 300 milligrams of master on a week or something yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what you did yeah. you were taking a grammar test and like a bunch of other shit just like everybody does and that's fine you know but it's a yeah. little deceptive um yeah. mm-hmm. Uh, yes that's that's i i i was uh i spoke with one of his former like i think colleagues might have been colleagues or like he might have been one of his team coaches or some shit and you know they talked openly about what everything they used to do and stuff and like yeah. that's what he told me he was like yeah this guy used to just do bo- regular bodybuilding shit mm-hmm. and now he's selling a philosophy that is not really what got him where he was you know, well, well uh, good luck to me trying to get John on the podcast next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have to say, though, do you guys remember the insane transformation he did for the USA's? No, he he, he was second place in the middleweight in 2014. And the next year he came back and won the heavyweights. Oh, uh, he jumped a cl- two classes up and won the class. From last, I, I think he was second call out for the middleweights, and then the next year he won the heavyweights because he was coached by Matt Jensen. All, all that, is, one of all, the- but all that is was just managing fatigue better, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> he managed. He he managed his uh, rest periods better. <laughs> Periodize his training. Come on. Man. Oh, Christ. You know what that is. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. he uses a lot of big words and shit. And, like, you know, that appeals to the nerd bodybuilders out there. If they want to throw money mm-hmm. at him, good for them. They're probably never going to be good, anyways, because they don't know how to train hard. Right. John knows how to train hard. Like, he yeah. trains fucking hard. He's very precise and he is smart with what he does. But, like, I got no problem with his training stuff. I think that's great. But like yeah. the low dose stuff, like, you know, two weight classes. I had no idea he'd done that. You know, that's pretty good. That's... <laughs> yeah. I know I, I'm pretty well versed at this bodybuilding thing, but I, I really wish I could deliver it the way John does. He sits, he sits like that. He's like, yeah, man. You know, he just he breaks that shit down so beautifully. I'm like, damn, 
I wish I could I could talk like that, but he he you can he, you he could did. you know if you, if you practice enough because like like, cause what he's saying could be broken down to simple, no, terms, it, it, right? very simple, but yeah, he yeah. chooses not to because he is marketing to a certain person who is going to buy his shit, which is yeah, yeah. you know it's very smart business wise, but I I think it's a little deceptive. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not how I would sell myself at least. I yeah. Matt, uh, uh, Matt, Matt was he was on my podcast as well, but he was on a few podcasts. He's pretty open, man. Uh, I, Dave Palumbo was like, you know, what are your test doses like? He said, uh, you know, gram and a half. I said, damn, he 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 really he just he really said that. He, he he'll say it. Like I'm like, oh, okay, because most I feel like most coaches be like, you know, uh, I don't go past seven fifty. I like to keep it five hundred. He just said gram and a half. I'm like, okay, yeah. Matt, they, uh, there you go, get it. You yeah, know, Matt yeah. has definitely gotten better over the years. Like as far as peaking people, obviously he has very good athletes in his in his team, right? But like yeah. he is pretty consistent with the guys that he peaks. I think. Yes. Yeah. And now his regular yeah. clients, if you're an amateur that doesn't look like nothing, you're talking to his wife. If she responds to you, you get lucky, you know, which is fucked up. But like you know, his his pro athletes that are getting the attention, like they look pretty damn good. You know? Yeah. Well, good luck for me trying to get Matt, Matt back on as well. Why do you have me on here? Really? <laughs> <It's burning bridges. laughs> no, no, you, you just no, be. No. I, I mean, you you don't dislike these people. You you just being honest. You, maybe Phil Viz you dislike. That's about it. Yeah, fuck that guy. Uh, the, the, I have no redeeming qualities for Phil to share. Well, you know how like I I say one thing like uh-huh. this is a negative, but he has all these redeeming qualities too. Like I'm trying to balance it out. You know, yeah, give yeah, him credit yeah. where it's due. But it's be fair, but, like. <laughs> Oh, but it's tough. All right, <laughs> all right, Joe. Uh, what was your first show? First show, like keto? You, you went the keto route too, or no? No, I actually. So it was like a 19, 19 week long prep, and it was only that long because when you're natty, they have oh, to be yeah. really long. Yep. And then so I did a complete natural. I didn't even do the whole clean thing or nothing. Mm, damn. And then, uh, but you I got did. Uh, what happened? I said, Stu, uh, Joe got you beat on that one. Yeah, no, I didn't get him in there. Yeah, but um, so I took so long because I couldn't decide on a show because it was COVID year. It was 2020. Mm-hmm. Really? And so, yeah, Damn. all the shows were getting canceled. You, you just started competing. It feels like yesterday, man. <laughs> yeah, that was my first show in uh, 2020. Well, were you self-coached at that point or no, Compton? No, everything I did by myself. Damn. Okay. And then, uh, so after 15 weeks, mm-hmm. I, I finally decided to pick a show where I would be four weeks out. So total 19 weeks, right? Mm-hmm. And it was, it was Iron Games, and they moved it to San Diego for that, that one. Uh-huh. And uh, I had to wear a mask on stage. That's like how deep in COVID we were. Oh, we got to get some pictures. We got to get some stage shots. Yeah. Yeah. I got to see yeah. Joe with the mask on. I'll, I'll do a throwback. Right. <laughs> and then, um, so actually, on my, uh, what I looked like, I was like a little posing video. I'm in red trunks and like this like hallway lighting. Uh-huh. That was the day before the show. But so I, I dieted myself down. I did the macro thing. Mm hmm. And so, like, you know, if it fits your macros, you did like if it fits your macros, yeah, wow, okay. So I was eating French toast and shit, oh, uh, yeah, but well, but nice. towards the last four weeks, though, I switched it to the the egg whites, oatmeal, and stuff because I didn't want any, uh, I knew that you didn't want any of that, like, very too much difference. You wanted yeah. uh, like a steady thing going so you know what to change and alter and stuff. Variables, control the variables, basically. Yeah, control all the variables, and then I also worked with KC a little bit. To oh make yeah. Sure that he, so he followed my diet that that first week when I was doing my cardio and my diet, mm-hmm. and then he slowly made adjustments where he did more like a carb cycling thing. Mm-hmm. I was just like, whether it was a leg day or an arm day, all my shit was the same. But Justin's kind of like that too. He is, yeah. So, but anyways. So, yeah, I stepped on stage at 187 pounds. Um, I don't know if it's because I was natty or not, but, like, I mean, I was peeled in my, like, everywhere but my legs. Like, my my quads and my hammies, like, the hammy showed a little bit, and there were some lines in my quads, but mm-hmm. they they could not get deep. I know what you and mean. And I don't know, it could have been inflammation, though, because I was doing two hours of cardio and stuff, too. 
100%. Well, so, I just didn't have enough muscle, too. Yeah, and that's stuff it. Stuff doesn't push through if it's small, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I actually, so again, you know, doing a natty, like, I took second in novice and open. So when I when I did that, I was like, I, I remember going to the hotel room. My my family was all happy for me and stuff. And I was like, well, I, you know, guys, I would have won, but I wasn't on the same playing field. So right now I'm going to let you guys know that I'm going on gear starting like <laughs> next week. Mm-hmm. So that rebound, <laughs> I started my first cycle. And my mom knew about it and everything, but she said, whatever you got to do, Joe, just please stay healthy. I was like, whatever. <laughs> so, I had that same <laughs> conversation before my first show. It was out of respect. I was yeah. like, you know, like, my- if I did this well, I want you to know it'll be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> so- and, you know, my mom was freaking out. I don't know if yours was. She still freaks out. <laughs> yeah. She just tells me I better not bury you before you bury me, you asshole. That's what she told me. <laughs> yeah. hey, there you, there you so, go. But, so my mom I- thinks I'm natty. <laughs> <laughs> so I took second um, and then going back to what Stu said about some of these people that jump on, right? So during that rebound, I went from 187 to uh, 238 pounds in uh, eight weeks. Dude, you got some crazy rebounds. The USA's one was crazy too, right? Crazy. Yeah. So uh, my body's really responded to anything new that was introduced to me. And then going with Justin, he introduced – even more new things to me with each kind of cycle he had me on. Mm-hmm. So my body's been touching these things for the first time. And so I keep responding. And then I've also like, kind of like evolutionized my training too for more strategic and like more volume and mm-hmm. certain things like that. So my body keeps getting these new stimuluses from like nutrition and drugs and weight and then training that, uh, I think that's why it keeps progressing. Yeah. Listen, man. I, I think that's something I fucked up on. Because I when I started drugs, I was just like, let's take the stack. And I had yeah, a lot yeah. of access to a lot of shit at the time because of my you know the circumstances I found myself in. And I was just like, it was, you know, I think that that was a mistake. You know, I think I probably could have kept my doses lower for longer and made similar kind of progress. For but sure. you know, still breathing. Joe. <laughs> Joe, you know, bro, <laughs> there you go. Be at a high level, so it's, it could be worse. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Joe, Joe is the undisputed king of rebounds. He turned, <laughs> he turned, he turns into a different person. Every rebound, he's like, "What am I looking at, bro? Like, what, what is, what's going on?" He, it looks like he had a two year off season. Every rebound, it, it, I, I don't even doesn't make. But Compton used to be like that too. Compton's rebounds would be like, "What the hell is going on?" You know, so. Hey, but you know, you, you just got to periodize that training real well. You know, that's all you need. Manage the team. <laughs> Manage the team, yeah. baby. It's a uh, secret. So, <laughs> they were my rebounds, too. One thing I've learned with each one that I've done. So the first one's a little different because it's the first time I'm touching gears. So you get stupid strong, yeah. like ridiculously yeah. strong. And then the one between California and the USA's, I actually listened to Justin in the beginning. And then when the rebound ended, I couldn't stop eating, I was still starving. And so he would drop my food and my weight wouldn't change. If anything, it went up. He's like, this doesn't really make sense. And, he, and he, I remember him telling Paul, like, he's either lying to me, he's continuously doing gear, or he's eating too damn much. Whichever one it is, his body's going to hurt. Yeah. And I shoot you not. I think without really being diagnosed, I'm pretty sure I had fucking rhabdo. Like the amount of pain that I was experiencing sure. trying to train it was like almost unbearable. I was like, I don't even know how I'm gonna work out. Like, yeah. I'll be able to do it, but um, it was I was in so much pain. And so this next, this last one after USA's, I instead of going hard and heavy, I kind of took Dave Palumbo's advice from a video I watched years ago. Good old saying Palumbo. that when when you uh when you go into a rebound, your body's already like gonna want to grow just simply with food. So your training doesn't have to be hard to start. Yeah. So I would make it difficult without going heavy right away and stuff. And so I slowly, incrementally start off with like, you know, one working set to two, then to three. And also after that, I slowly started getting my strength going up. Smart. And then like towards the end, I was really strong, but nothing hurt. And then when Justin pulled me back with my food, I listened. Yeah. And so now I'm like, I have an appetite. I feel good. My body doesn't hurt. I actually feel healthy. Yeah. So I just kind of gotten a little more uh, discipline with each one. 
So just Justin makes everything so simple. You don't realize the amount of thought and experience that goes behind it because it looks so simple until you actually start fucking up and doing what you shouldn't be doing. Then you realize why he did what he did to begin with. And he 100%. knows, you know, yes. and he knows everything. If you're cheating, he knows. He knows if you're not pushing <laughs> cardio. He knows whatever you're fucking doing, he knows. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I told him, yo, I was doing some too much. I was doing quest bars and chips. He's like, it showed on your body. I know, I know, I know. I'm like, yeah, of course. He's. Like, he he knows what the fuck is going on. You know what I'm saying? But uh, for me, my first show, I was 22, I believe. That was the Easterns. The Eastern USA. Um, you used to live over on the East Coast? Yeah, New York. I was born and raised in New York. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. So, okay. I, I was doing all the New Jersey and New York shows, so uh, I would see Nick Walker, Nick Trigilli. I would see those, those guys. I even worked with John Reagan, who worked with Nick uh, Trigilli and worked with Dallas. And Wait, you, you he coached you? John O'Regan? Oh, we never talked about that, did we? Yeah. That was Bro, my I've heard some shit about John O'Regan. Well, yeah, he Me wasn't too. like bad about <laughs> him as a person, but like he's just a wild boy. Oh, he's wild. Yeah, he's wild. <laughs> but he, he, that was, it was told toward the tail end, though. You know, he passed away. Do you, you know he passed away? Yeah, I did. No. Yeah. Oh, so my that, God, really? Yeah, he did pass away. But that was toward the tail end where he was actually getting more mild. You know, um, he didn't do, I mean, at the time, I, I didn't think it was a lot. But it was a gram and a half a test, which is a lot for a 22 year old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <bro. laughs> you know, so he he was definitely aggressive, but he was really smart too. He just um didn't have a lot of regard, maybe for longevity. Um, but he was a good guy, but he didn't charge me a dime, bro. I actually tried paying him, and he wouldn't take my money. I didn't have a lot of money at the time, you know, uh, but he wouldn't take my money. So that's something I, I definitely uh respect about him. But for that show, he didn't help me for that show. That, that was actually uh, I, I self coached, good old self coaching for your first show. That's what I did. Um, I started, I started like twelve weeks out, but I couldn't stop eating ice cream for like the first four weeks. <laughs> so what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you started at eight weeks out. Then. So I started. I started at eight weeks, <laughs> and, and <laughs> I remember at like. Four weeks out, I'm looking in the mirror. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm peeled. This is some fucking, this is some monster shit, bro. Did we on, bro? I text uh, some pictures to a good friend of mine who at the time, he was already at the national level. I said, bro, what do you think, bro? He said, you got about 20 pounds to lose there. I said, what? What, 20 pounds away? What are you talking about? I'm straight, bro. He said, from the front. But them damn glutes and hamstrings, you got about at least 10 pounds. I said, this man, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> I step on that damn stage, I had about 15 pounds to get off my damn ass. But, <laughs> but, but like Joe said, I, I think part of it, bro, I think we just, you just don't have enough muscle back there. I don't know what the fuck it is. The lower body, that shit is, was not getting lean, bro. It was just... I felt like if I if I would have lost ten pounds, I would have turned into I don't know what I would have looked like at that point. But yeah. you, you don't have the muscle maturity, the density. I I can't even. I did I did do quite a bit of cardio. I don't know what it is, but the lower body just would not get hard. Honestly, it just wouldn't. So uh, my abs are good. Chest. Uh, that's when I have more than one line in my chest. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too. <laughs> it looked. It looked pretty good from the front, but the back was a was a mess. So, uh, as far as drugs, I mean, I did I did way too much at that time. I was on forums and watching, you know, Boston Lloyd cycles. I'm like, this is the way, bro. <laughs> Boston had just won that overall. I'm like, oh, that's how you win the overall. Let's oh do yeah, it. I said, let's but, do it. But baby. dude, Boston was strict on his diet. Oh, very, very strict. I mean, once he locked in, not like off season. But once he locks in, I'm gonna just plug my laptop. Once he locks in, he, he was not gonna mm. diet. Damn, I gotta try that fucking ice cream prep. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. Well, James Hollings had did some <clears throat> some shit like that. Oh, yeah. I think that last show he did when he coached himself, he would do like three days on real low food and then he would have a crazy refeed. Well, yeah, he would just do junk. Food. 
just two, bullshit. Two three feet of uh, a cheat day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did that. I did that. Okay, so yeah, I didn't know. go. Over, I didn't go over the diet part. So even when my diet was on point, yeah, I would have like Saturday and Sunday. I went. With, I went with the stew method. I did the Saturday and Sunday weekly. <laughs> But the, the other, <laughs> you got your other, own method now, Stu. Look at that. Yeah, I got I did. Some of the, the people I'm coaching would be like, "Can we start doing that?" It's just Stu. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then uh, f- funny enough, yeah, the rest of the week I did go keto, but my keto was like literally like I would go to the uh, we call it bodegas in New York, but it's like I don't know, like a, com- a deli convenience store, and I would get uh, a Philly cheesesteak with no bread. So it would be like, a Philly, <laughs> right, let me get a Philly cheesesteak salad. And they would just throw it on, on some lettuce. Cheesesteak salad? <laughs> yeah. So I would do that. I would go to McDonald's, get like a double cheeseburger and take and just eat it without the bread. That was, that was my, that was my, it, it, I know it sounds ridiculous, but what do you, I, I was just doing whatever. I don't know what the fuck was going on. I, I was just. Doesn't that shit make you nostalgic though? Just thinking back to when you didn't know your ass yeah, was on the ground. Bro. Like, no, like, oh, those are good old days. They talk yeah. shit about Sam, but we was dude, doing worse than yeah, that. Exactly, dude. I was just thinking about that. Like the the reason why his videos are cool is because it like takes you back to a simpler time when you were just slinging weights around, eating big, and just like you know having fun. You know, it's time of year, bro. If you seen my form back then, bro, I was legit pulling seven plates. I shouldn't be pulling seven plates. That's how you know how shitty my form was. Like, <laughs> it was insane, bro. I was barely even locking the shit out. I'm, like, just doing some crazy shit, bro. It was, I was struggling, like, seven plates and doing fucking, like, this. It was insane, bro. But, I mean, I couldn't say it didn't work because, I mean. Seven plates is seven plates. <laughs> I mean. Bro, hard work works. Yeah. <laughs> if you eat enough, know. you're going to build some muscle. <laughs> hard work works, man, you know, but. Yeah, but 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 to wrap it up, yeah, that was pretty much a keto, two big cheat days, legs were fat, ass was fat. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I I enjoyed it, man. I got to be honest, it was fucking fun. It it was fun. The fun part of just getting leaner and working out and doing something. The bow was backstage. That was the Dennis Wolf guest pose. I'm watching. I'm like, damn, think I could be that big. I don't know if I could be that big, but that's that's <laughs> big. You know, it, it was fun, bro. I was seeing all the pros come to the shows. Uh, all the East Coast guys were there. Uh, David Henry guest post too, and that was when David Henry was, bro. He looked like he looked like Sean. Looks Sean Clarita looks nowadays. You know, what and, year was this? 2016, uh, 20, oh, damn, 2016, okay. 2015, maybe twenty twenty fifteen. You know, I, I I did my first show a long time ago, but I wasn't competing regularly. Yeah, it was like. 2015 and 2017 then i moved here so it wasn't like i was competing like every year like consistently so i missed a couple of years there but it was fun bro i just knew i needed a lot more tissue so i, I wanted to take my time i didn't start doing national shows till recently you know just because why would i i mean yeah. fuck? i think way too many people brush that dude they're yeah. just like i mean uh joe's first national show he won yeah. My first national show, I won. You know, it just takes a while. It's, it's, it, for guys like Joe and I, who are, like, bigger framed and, like, we just have to be huge to look good, right? Like, mm-hmm. we're not going to be competitive in the heavyweights. The, so we got to be super. So you're just going to have to take years putting on mm-hmm. tissue and not just compete year after year. You know, once you're there and you're kind of, like, in that vying for that spot, you know, think, like, Brandon Barrow, for example. You know, he's big enough. He just needs to, like, nail, nail certain things, right? Exactly. Um, then you can compete more frequently, you know, on a yearly or maybe twice a year basis. But, like, it's just fucking expensive, and you're not going to make progress and improve if you're not big enough yet. Exactly. This is bodybuilding. You need to be big. 100%. Well, speaking of Brandon, I'm, I'm actually – I want to have him on a podcast, but I want to wait until after the amateur O because I think he's going to win it. Um, uh, I, have you seen Trey? Yeah, I was just gonna say, oh, yeah. <laughs> Trey looks crazy to you, right? Oh, You're right, yeah. Trey, Trey. He turned into a different human being, dude. Yeah. He put on 25 pounds in like a year and a half, like legit, too. Yeah, but he had he had that rap though, but it didn't seem like it he's really- good now. He sent me some pictures yesterday, he looks fucking insane. Good. What about oh. is um, is this guy still doing it? Uh, Elliot, Elliot, no, he's out. 
Like, how is he going to get on stage? From shows, right? But yeah. why, why, why is he... Oh, how many preps have he backed out at this point? At least four. That's two years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Man. I mean, he's... Uh, this there has to be something up. I, I I don't know what's what's up. I, I don't know if it's nervous, bro, or you it, know it, we always get the song and dance, and I, I don't know what to believe. It's always something. Right? I don't know the guy, so I, like I can't say if he's lying or not. I don't know him as a person, but like he might you know, believe he said, it. He said he was like he was prepping and his body wasn't responding. He just wasn't getting in shape like he wanted to. Um, but you know he was going to do the amateur O, and then Trey said he was going to do it. I I don't know. I gotta be honest, I man. Know, dude. Uh, yeah, I don't know Elliot that well, but that can't be a coincidence, bro. Like, my body never responds well to the fucking diet. <laughs> Every prep I do, I'm like, it's not fucking responding. I just keep fucking going. I, I don't know. You just do it. I mean, and there's always gonna be shit. Oh, I, I he, he tore his forearm. Okay, I, I had a calf tear. You, you have pain in the elbow. I mean, that's not enough. A forearm tear isn't going to stop me from doing a show. I keep yeah, so you know keep either he's, he's a total head case and he keeps dropping because of that, or you know, yeah, the he's worst actually luck. had the worst luck ever. You yeah, know? yeah. And I guess like you know, me saying that is like it's going to come off as rude to him. And I like Elliot a lot. I don't, I don't intend it that way, but I just, I just don't know him, so I can't say. You know, yeah, there, there has to be, uh, there has to be deeper than like it, you can't just not be able to do any show. Everybody has issues. Everybody has problems. Everybody's body, you know, isn't always going to work. But there's, you got to, if you're going to, if you want to do it, you're going to do it, man. Look at, look at Trey. Trey full blown in the hospital with Abdo. He could have said, oh, my body's just not going with me and dropped out. Yeah, he was thinking about it. Like, that's what I'm saying. We're sport getting better. And then, uh, you know, a week went by and it was like, oh, your bloods are, are fine now. Keep going. But you see what I mean? So if you want to get it done, you get it done, bro. The pe- people have done shows with full torn biceps and hernias and torn quads, the whole nine, you know. I saw I saw this blind blind girl just did a show, you know. Shit, blind is being blind is hard. You fucking still did the show. If you do uh, a prep yeah. without any adversity within those twelve to sixteen weeks or whatever, then you probably yeah. didn't prep right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That guy so. Elliot did a show, uh, a regional show, a few yeah. years back, and he won that show. Yeah, Handily, we have pictures he looked of great it. there. He looked great. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he could win any show, but you got to you got to show up to win. You know, you got to show up. You know, even if you if you're a little bit off or whatever, you got to go for it. If you want, if this is your dream, you got to go for it. And if you don't, you're just gonna be another what if story. And that that shouldn't be the story for him because he has all the potential in the world to be a really fucking good pro, to be a top pro. But genetics are just genetics. There's people who had better genetics than Phil Heath, but they'll never beat. They never beat him because they didn't have the mentality he got. You know, you got Lionel Bayeki. I mean, I think he could have beat anybody. I think Cedric could have beat anybody. But will you? That's gonna be. That's gonna depend on you, man. Depend. Yeah, on I just want him to get up there, man. I, just if it him. really has been bad luck, I mean, Jesus, that's got to be so hard mentally. It does. Like, it to does. get so close and then just get the rug pulled out from under you over and over again. But, yeah, um, yeah like you said, any show that he does, he's probably going to get, get a card there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, at the pro level, you know, I think his back needs a lot. Of, he's, he's got some freaky shots and some freaky sure. body parts. Like, the flow is a little weird. They don't quite mm-hmm. fit together, you know? Yeah. Um, but... So, like, at the pro level, you know, I think he'll probably be competitive in there just because of the freakiness and the condition and the mass, right? But, like, yeah, um, yeah I mean, just fucking get there already, you know? He deserved to be. Just, <laughs> just, just step on stage, man. And guess what? Even if you don't win the national show, so what? Come back better in, until, until you win, you know? Um, I think that's what it is. He's waiting for the perfect storm until he wins his first national debut, you know? Those of guys do that. They wait until the very end. I mean, Joe did this last year, you know, but he actually went through with it. <laughs> yeah, know? but he, he didn't tell everybody he was going to do like two shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like um, I don't, I don't get it. And the, the do I don't understand why he would pick the the amateur. Oh, n- no offense, but like I think I think he should be trying to win nationals and USA's. You know. Uh, I mean, he, he looks like to me like 
he's considered the best amateur right now. I mean, that's you can't really say that until the person wins, but that's what he's considered. So if, if that's the case, I think you should go for the most competition possible. But who the fuck? What, what the fuck do I know? I'm, I'm just an amateur. You know, but 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 you're not a fucking amateur. Next year, you watch. Mark my words, you're gonna turn pro not next year. But like that's how I look at it. I, you know, I, I want to do the USA is because it's competitive and it brings the best out of me as well. Not that that's amateur true, Olympia, bro. you know. So that's that. That's how I feel, you know. And I, I'm always gonna put my my best foot forward. Whether I look my best, I look my worst. I still work my ass off either way, you know. And I, I'm gonna go up there and present what I got. That's all you can control. Who shows up? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Oh, but this guy, this this guy's doing the show. I don't fucking care. That has nothing to do with me, you know. But it, it doesn't matter. You 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 go. You bring your best. You could win. You be you don't know that. You don't know how it's gonna translate on stage. Instagram pictures mean nothing, you know. Joe on Instagram, uh, he didn't look like Mister USA per se, but in person he looked like Mister USA by a landslide. Do you remember last year? Like I didn't either. Exactly. exactly. How many people had me winning that show? Cause I had, Nobody, yeah. <laughs> fucking Trey was making fun of me there because he was like, dude, you got to get a better camera because your pictures look like shit. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yeah. When I saw you, I was like, okay, I see good legs. That's a good waist. Okay, cool. But like seeing you like, you know, backstage on stage, I was like, oh, yeah, he want this shit. I, I think everybody there was like, yeah, he got it. Yeah, he got this one. You, you, you could tell, but you have to see it in person. You have to see it peaked. It's not, you can be the best bodybuilder in the world five weeks out and not be the best bodybuilder in the world on stage, you know, like a Dennis James, right? Four weeks out, shit, that was, that was undefeated. But when you're peeled, your body doesn't look how it looks four weeks out, five weeks out, you know? I I didn't know what I was going to look like at the, I'm sure Joe probably experienced the same thing because like I never competed at that level before. I didn't know how big the guys were. I never stood next to people at that level. So I was like, I don't know what to expect here. No. You know, uh, hey, even even when I was uh, like how Beatty talked highly of me when he saw me in person, I go backstage and I was confident in my ability to do well. But I looked around like, man, some of these guys are fucking huge. I remember <laughs> seeing Brandon <laughs> Barrow backstage, and I was like, yeah, he, he looked. He was, he, remember he was walking around with that gas sweatsuit, bro, just, like, he, he looked he, toe. He looked he down as fuck. until the end. He wasn't he talking menacing. to nobody. No, no. I was like, oh, okay. I was yeah. like, I was like, shit, am I? And then I was, yeah, it went better, but <laughs> I felt, I felt so small, bro. It's crazy. It's you crazy. know what the best part of that prep was, honestly, was you know Morgan Rice. Yeah, yeah, dude, he was talking so much shit running into that show. He's like, he, I remember he messaged me. He was like, listen, dude, here's my honest opinion. This is not your year. You know, try to do well here. Oh, there's some momentum in the north. He's, it's not your year. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> oh, God. I got text he sent me. Uh, every once in a while, I'll throw it up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all a good fun. Like, I, I love yeah, Morgan. Yeah. He's fucking hilarious. But, like, <laughs> just, he was like, I saw him, like, from backstage. He was standing out on the side there and he was, like, doing this shit. He <laughs> 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 was so funny, man. I think. <laughs> I think that was Brandon's be- best package, though I've seen. Um, you were you, you were harder. You, you were harder in, in the mid midsection. You had a better midsection for sure. And he didn't have a tan on in the morning. No, he remember, didn't. he didn't. Like he no. he had a tan, but it was awful. So yeah, I didn't. It looked it looked like he didn't have any tan on. Honestly, I got to be honest. Yeah. With you, you know, so that's what. Mm-hmm. But guys, it's that time. I'm, I'm going hypo again. So. <laughs> I'm gonna to get this meal in. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> hey, I got a question before we go. Zay, where are you from? Yeah, yes, I'm Syrian. From Syria, Syrian. bro. Okay. Yeah. You have you sound just like an old friend of mine who's actually a pro now. Uh his name's um Abdullah Musa, who's he's Qatari. Um he's like the only pro from Qatar. But you have like the same cadence and intonation to your voice as he does. Because you know he learned English when he when he came here, so <laughs> you know That's he, awesome, man. Well, you know I who should... he sounds like as as well. Uh, he reminds me of um damn what's his name. Uh, he he's on bro chat. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. He's German. Roman Fritz. Roman, my, yeah. Roman Fritz. Yeah, he kind of got uh, a, 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 a cadence. You know. <laughs> you, you yeah. By the way, English remember than we do. 
Huh? Oh, I don't think so, dude. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I just gotta say it. Roman is fucking peeled, dude. Oh my god, hey, hey, Roman he, looks good, man. Oh, oh my good, lord, man. jeez, yeah, he just needs bigger biceps uh, from the oh, front, and I, he I, would be great. He he uh he messaged me. He was like, he told me like, whatever you're doing for your arms, keep doing. And I was like, okay. And then I I convinced him to start shooting his arms. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Hopefully he scores because, like, that's the one thing that's missing on him. I was like, dude, you gotta fucking get going here. He should do it. I mean, I, honestly, he 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 should do it. You know. Yeah. Same with Hutchinson. Be honest, bro. Jordan, I've you know? never seen someone that has a double hip surgery. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. A replacement that has such good legs like this. Yeah. Like no way. It didn't affect him one percent. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I often find that, like, so those injuries were caused, right? So that has to do with kind of probably his training style. Mm -hmm. And, like, I remember when I got surgery on my shoulders, I Did I you? developed the, I, yeah, both of them. And I, I uh, developed the shit out of my shoulders and my chest after that surgery. It, like, oh. forced me to learn how to train better. Oh, oh. So like mind muscle connection was more important than moving weight that fucking hurt me, kind of thing. That makes sense. Makes sense, yeah. Branch, Branch Rowan said that about his triceps. He, he started doing per well, you know, branches for him. He started yeah. doing perfect. <laughs> he started doing perfect yeah. form for triceps, and they blew up. And I'm like, huh, it's interesting, you know. So they they might be coming to that. It makes you a better bodybuilder to fuck yourself up a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I had actually had a, a, a really bad ankle sprain to the point that uh, I was in pain for a full calendar year, literally a full calendar year. And then my calves grew after that because I wasn't donkey calf raising 800 pounds anymore. I was actually training my calves, you know what I'm saying? So they're still small, but, hey, they grew. You know? Greater than they were before. <laughs> <laughs> calves don't matter, dude. Don't, you don't need that shit. That's what it Easy for you to say. Easy for Zay to say that. They don't that. count, bro. Oh my god, they, 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 they don't count. But, but I mean, he's right. Uh, he won after he brought his arms up and his back up. So arms oh, and yeah. back count more than cows, right? Because Zay's well, legs, hundred percent. Zay's legs yeah. always been like that. Like he had, you know, insane legs the whole time. So, but his arms and back came up, and he got his cars. So, but hey, listen, calves look good though, man. They they look good in those shorts, man. They show muscle. Calves. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> but to be honest, big arms over big calves, dude. Any, yeah, I, I didn't like, realize like Nick Walker realize. arms. That's nuts, you know. He got calves too, though. But yeah, but you yeah he does. I, I didn't realize how cool it was to walk around with like big arms until I got big arms. Like, I never used to give a shit. I was like. I want to just have big legs. That's cool, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, ah, it, it just like strokes the ego a little bit. It's nice. Mm -hmm. I, I just had this conversation yesterday because Saturdays are always my arm days. My favorite day of the fucking week. Yeah. Like, ever since I was a kid, that was my favorite to train. I'm talking to all these bodybuilders, pros and everything. I hate training arms. I hate fucking arms. I feel like it's a waste of workout. Like, what the fuck? That's like the one thing I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny you said that, that's that, that's how I feel on arm day. It's so boring. I uh, I don't really do much for it, but <laughs> that's them. usually if it if it's been like your best body part. I don't think does anybody like to train their best body part? How does that work? I don't know if that's a thing. I like doing legs. I got decent legs. I will tell you what though, arms are growing on me, like literally and like technically, you know, metaphorically. <laughs> like it's like I finally started doing an arm day recently, and it's like I actually get into it. I just like oh, yeah. you know beat the shit out of them. I'm not doing other touch up work the rest of the week for the most part, but yeah. Um, in prep, in prep, I like I like a good arm pump in prep. I'll have my pump cover on, and you look kind of like, uh, you know, you, hey bro, you do classic, yeah, you know, I do classic. <laughs> <laughs> you, he take off the pump cover, and they're like, oh shit, damn. I'm like, you know, I'm just saying. I'm a classic guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just a classic guy training arms, baby. Just a classic guy. <laughs> but people, I, I still get that sometimes, but they always like under 20 years old bro you you pro you do classic i'm like yeah because that's the only division they're familiar with like, yeah like i know chris bumstead and that's hey, all i just i just say yeah i'm a ifbb pro uh classic physique brother oh, <laughs> how, how, can I, how can i help you man <laughs> people yeah. don't understand <laughs> like the scale difference between an open bodybuilder and a classic guy no they, they it's won't. like until you well, see him in person it's like 
doesn't count, you know, make sense. Well, Nick Sheriff and Powell, he's always talking about Bumstead. He's going to do the open and he's going to win. I'm like, no. <laughs> you, you know how much muscle he needs? Yeah, the phenomenal physique, bro. At six, Look at him next to Ian. That's what I'm saying. Train together. Bro, come on. At six one, you got Rafa competing at the 250s, 260, and he, and they call him undersized, and he's shorter than Bumstead. It's like, come on, bro. Yeah, you gotta, it's two different divisions, bro. Crazy fit, but it's two different classes. Regan just competed at two seventy, and they're still like, ah, he could be a little bigger. It's like, what, what the fuck? Same. <laughs> you yeah, know? those videos with Chris and Ian together, just like when you see them side by side, and like the front to back thickness difference is just like it's he's insane. literally twice as thick. It's wild. It's insane, you know. You know, from the front, you know, they're both wide, so it's not as crazy, but like it's just different ballpark, totally different. People have have no no idea of what it takes, you know. I know I know Brian Jones. He wants to move to the open, you know, yeah. but he takes it seriously. But he's taking like three years off because he he gets it. He's like, bro, like I need more, and he's like, he's like my height. He's like, bro, I need more muscle. And I'm like, he's I, another guy. I saw him in person in Arizona because he lives down there a couple of times. He's he's right. big. He's got these muscles that just poke off him, right? Insane. But then front to back, like he's just like there's yeah. no thickness there. Yeah, it's weird. Sure. Um, you know, he looks good in poses, but like the yeah. density is just you can you can tell. When he hits the poses, he looks as big as anybody. Exactly. Yeah, but right. but standing there, yeah. I think he's gonna do really well. But he's gonna have to he's gonna have to get into three hundred pounds, but he's gonna you just have to. If you're if you're over five ten, you gotta be over. You just it's like you you have to nowadays, you know. So mm -hmm. it's just one of those things you gotta you gotta be big, big, dense, 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 you know, until you get there. But it gotta, reminds me of RPG, you know, RPG. Oh, Ron yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, what a great well, physique. Well, there you wow. go. I mean, he he competes in what two sixties, and he's still undersized, you know. So you just got, but he had the phenomenal physique. Your phenomenal physique. So sometimes I, I wonder how bad do people want it. I feel like if, if you're all in and you look like that, I feel like you're gonna start winning some shows eventually, you know. But I wonder how some people they have full lives, they have a full career, they're engineers and shit. So this is just something they do on the side. But if you're all in, I can't see how you won't do it. If, if Brian wants to be, if Brian is all in, I think he can he can really do it. You know, it just depends. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I Before you guys go, mm -hmm. uh, did you guys hear about this dude? Uh, he's a 212 qualified for the Olympia that did the guest yeah. posing somewhere oh, yeah. else. Let and he go got bad for a year. Let me Whoa. pull that up. I thought that too. I was like, lucky Bro. it was just a year. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I mean, how did they find out is the question. He probably, I hope he didn't post this shit on his damn uh, social media. Yeah. Let me see <laughs> if I could. I, I didn't know I wasn't familiar with who he was, but I was like, wow, that's that's kind of harsh. But yeah, he's lucky he didn't get banned because it, it's in, it's in the contract. From what I heard, I don't I don't have it. A yeah, that guy right there. Right there. Yeah, there yeah. The guy looks sick. It, it's just you don't fuck with the IFBB man. I mean, <laughs> that that should go. With, let's be let's be real. That should go without that should go without saying. You know Common saying? sense. Yeah, th th that's something you should already know. What's his name? You know his name. Uh, Mazen, Mazen, he's Mazen. he's from Saudi. He's from Saudi, but lives in Dubai, I think. Yeah. You said Mazen, you think like this? Yeah, uh, yeah. Mazen. I mean, go back to that post. He's he's tagged in that post. Oh, he tagged him. Oh, that's rude. They tagged him in the damn. Oh, damn. How do you look at tags on the damn? It's on the computer. You click on it. Click on this. Oh, I don't know, bro. I don't oh, know. yes, no. I'm, I'm gonna have to get a technician. Uh, you, you, you go to uh, <laughs> bodybuilding without borders. They probably I mean, posted it. Yeah. yeah. Let me do that. I need my assistant. Where my assistant. These two pages, man, they do a lot for the competitors. They do. Um, that who's the best bodybuilding page? They be posting some weird shit. Yeah, but, that, that was uh, a little yeah. annoying. They do some annoying. Oh, this guy right here. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Man. As in, yeah. He looks. He looks good. Yeah, he's a doctor, yeah. you know. Oh yeah, damn. Yeah. Doctor, he's an MD. You know? I gotta shoot him a DM if he's a doctor. Mm. See what I could get my hands get on. Some scripts. <laughs> <laughs> Got me, Benson. Yeah, he, he has your DMP, baby. 
Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I feel like that should go without say, though. You can't, you can't be doing. Or, or ask somebody, be like, "Hey, Tyler, uh, you mind if I go do this guest posing?" Tyler's gonna be like this. What do you think? What do you think, Mason? Um, <laughs> but, but at least ask. You know, come on, a year suspension. You, you're two weeks out the Olympia. You know, come on. Wow. What did he? Where did he pose that? What did he do? He just did uh -huh. a posting for another organization out there. Oh, in the Middle East. Is that an organization? Yeah. Well, they, they probably, I mean, honestly, they probably, probably I just had a, 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 you know, Destiny. His name is David, actually, Bo Debbie, but the first name is David, so you can call him David. That, you, you know you know who that guy is, right? Destiny on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, D. Hestiny. Yeah, yeah. He, he just, uh -huh. I wanted to miss it. I literally just had him before you guys uh, came on, and, um, Bo, they paying well over there, man. You know, but not that I'm thinking about going there enough, and I'm just saying, <laughs> but from, from from what I from what I hear, from what I hear, they they paying well. So they probably paying really good for the guest post. And he was like, maybe he maybe he waited out. He was like, go to the Olympia, get a their call out, uh, take this sixty grand. He he might have planned this shit out. I'm like, fuck it, I'll take this damn sixty grand. So yeah, I these foreign guys don't get fair looks at the Olympia. You just know, to be honest, you know. He got to pay his bills, you know. So I talked to Bodebi about that, and I'm, I'm like, uh, "Is there any chance you'll come to the IBB Pro League?" And he was like, <laughs> "But uh, he's like, if my coach thinks that's the, a good choice, I would." But it has to make sense, bro. He's a grown man. He has a wife and kids. He's trying to pay his bills. He doesn't. We care about clout a lot more than people in Dubai. People in Dubai, they don't care about clout. They're not trying to be famous and popular. He's just trying to make a living. I mean, it is what it is. So if he's making all that money over there, honestly, do you. Do what you got to do, you know. I think he can do really well in the pro league as well because he's not really missing much, you know. But but what's the incentive, man? You know, when the prize money is 10 grand to win an open show, and he's a 212, Boom. you know. Yeah. This guy here is 212. He's probably getting two grand to win a show. You know, well, the, they don't offer much support to the athletes. Exactly. It's, it's like, dude, it's a raw deal. If you got a better one. He won, he won 60 grand in that first show. I didn't even ask him how much he won for the Mr. World, which I would assume if it's their version of Olympia, more than 60 grand. So if he walked away. 60 grand, dude. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's like a salary for, for the year. It, for exactly show. my point. And they, they treat them like gods over there. So it's like. I mean, stay in Dubai. Stay in Dubai and, and make as much as you can. Maybe pull like a Kamal when you're like 70, come here and try it out. <laughs> <laughs> wait, yeah. wait, wait till you're like 45. He said he's 34. He got plenty of time. You know, I would say maybe another sit when he's 40, you know, come here. See if you can snap. But I don't know if he can make 212, bro. He said. He said he was 108 kilos, and when I checked, that was like almost 240. I'm like, holy fuck, yeah, you know? Sounds about right. But uh, I still think he could be even drier, even though he was in shape. Uh, but I don't know if he can make 212, maybe 230, maybe 230, 220, you know. But that means he had a lot of a lot of muscle because you know he can't he can't be he probably five He's seven tall, under, yeah, probably below five seven, honestly, you know. So. Yeah. Look at Tony, dude. He whipped my ass. I'm Thirty I mean, pounds heavier than him. Yeah, he was. He wasn't <laughs> even two twenty. So yeah, yeah. I, I think if he comes here, he'll do damage. But if I you think got he those should, crazy muscle bells. You can. You, you don't can need to be. You know, you can yeah. do damage in the open. I, I think he should milk, milk, uh, milk that that league, the other league, and then when he's done milking, milking the league, you got you got to work for yeah. him. You come here, and then get some of this, uh, some of this. Uh, Western Western love as well. Yeah, it just sucks that, that they don't really. That, well, I don't see why they don't treat the top pros here like that. You know, they should. They should. Just, why? Well, those <laughs> it's not like gyms, they don't have the money for it, man. Yeah, well, even the gyms out there, they'll 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 pay you to come to their gym. You know, yeah. whereas here, yeah, I'm paying 120 for this membership at them. Yeah. So, but it is what it is. Uh, the Dubai trip next year, boys. <laughs> I'm actually going happy. there in two months. Oh, you going when, there? When do you plan on going to Gold? Yeah, yeah. I'll go with Venice. Yeah, I I'm down for whenever. I, I, I might was go talking today. to Paul about trying to shoot over there for like uh, Saturday workout or something, or maybe even legs on Friday or something. Um, 
I'm I'm down. I do legs Monday and Friday, so I could definitely hit some legs uh, Friday. Go, yeah, go. Let me let me, uh, let me talk to Paul and uh, well, we'll message you in the group chat, but um, mm-hmm. we'll try to set something up for Friday. I'll, I'll train my client early so we can go out there. Dope. Let let's let's show. Zabe Zabe's there too, right? Yeah, he trains there. Yeah, I train there too. Yeah, he he, he know, drives. They drive three yeah. hours every day just to work out there. Yeah, fuck it, yeah. man. Yeah, 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 you live yeah. far. You live in Long Beach, right? Yeah, dude. It's literally an hour and fifteen minutes away. Fuck, bro. I ate a meal and get straight in the car, and then I get there. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, I mean, it's it's like the size. I mean, it's it's a huge gym. There's like two outdoor areas. There's three full size gyms in in the gym. I, I went I went there once. Um, it was like six years ago. Uh-huh. Like I was still natty. <laughs> so, oh damn, natty. Joke. Yeah, when I went, this is before COVID, right? They moved everything outside. Well, they have an outside section now and stuff. So I haven't seen it at all. Yeah. But I remember when everything was like clustered into like three rooms and then the outside. Yeah, yeah. So to be honest, man, if you yeah. if you swole and you go there often, you don't gotta pay. I, I just walk in that motherfucker. I gotta be honest. I, I thought they left pros in for free. <laughs> Technically <laughs> not. But oh my lord. <laughs> I've been paying all this time. You gotta just walk in, Zay. Just walk in. If you're paying, they're not gonna say shit. But if you I'm gonna bring pay, a jack- I'm gonna be a jackass and bring my trophy. open the gate open but but like before they put in that electronic shit nobody paid like i mean i can't say nobody but everybody i know just walked the fuck in you know but you got to be on slow bro if you Mm. trying to walk in there 170 pounds you're gonna get turned you're not gonna walk in well i'm natty right now so maybe i should wait Mm. Yeah, you gotta yeah. wait till, till you juice. My shoulders don't have that pop anymore, you know. <laughs> <laughs> even even my girl, I, I was like, just walk in with me. They won't say anything. She's like, you sure? I'm like, just walk in. And she walked in all awkward, and nervous. <laughs> I'm like, just walk in. And then she walked in. She like, I'm like, you see, yeah. I told you, you gotta You're get, all get gotta get swole. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, right, one time this happened to Dorian Yates. He was at the front desk, mm-hmm. and the girl was trying to make him pay. Uh, a pass, you know, for the he, pass. He wasn't on swole. She, she oh, don't care. Oh, yeah, he, that story. Yeah, she don't care yeah. if he's doing. He got to be on swole still. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> he's nah. like, look behind you. I'm the guy in that fucking picture right there. <laughs> that that happened to Lee Priest, and then they they ended up giving him a lifetime. I mean, he should have he should already had the lifetime. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Shit. It happened. It happened a few. I know it don't happen to Jay. Jay, you see him walking there on camera. Don't nobody. Everybody, like, hey, what's up, Jay? It works right in that motherfucker. <laughs> Open to wipe your ass when you take your shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. All right, guys. So yeah, so uh, hit me up. Hit me up, Joe. Let's make it a make it a thing. You could uh beef stew, you you invited too if you want to make the, the drive. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to avoid LA entirely if I can. <laughs> it's okay, you're a pro. <laughs> yeah, man, you're, you're good. You you don't let the you only free no thing will be the gym entry there. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh 40 bucks right now per day yeah. fuck off yeah hey, if they don't That's let nice. me in i'm turning the fuck around <laughs> I'll, I'll take my 40 bucks to the fucking gas station get the fuck exactly. out of here. they gotta get you they gotta get you did they stop putting the mr usa's on the wall too they used to put the mr usa's on the wall but they they ran out of space so too bad Nobody. put me on a machine then <laughs> <laughs> All you right, earned it, bro. You definitely earned it. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Bye, guys. All right, man. Thanks Thank you, guys. guys. Have you. a great rest of your day. You too, man. Right.